Open session agenda, please. Good evening. <clears throat> After I read the agenda, the select board can vote to amend or approve the agenda as presented. Uh, there is a public comment section, but I haven't heard from anybody that needs to make a public comment tonight. Items may be taken out of order and topics not anticipated 48 hours in advance may be added. Item number one is the consent agenda, which is the payroll warrant, draft minutes of March 18th, 2023 and March 18th, 2023, uh, select board at the advisory hearing. The next meeting is April 20th, and the next town, the town meeting meeting is April 25th, and the second night, April 26th, if needed. We have three one-day liquor licenses, one for April 8th, which is a private event, April 15th for Pauline Bounds, that's a private event, and another one for April 29th, that is also a private event. Item number two is the town campus project update. Sam Nelson and Janet Walsh will be here tonight to present that. Library arts and craft fair update. Christine Walsh and Brooke Yarborough, co-chairs, will be here to speak to the select board. Then we have consideration of various appointments for item number four. The finance director town accountant, Deb Saffring for a term for three years for 2026. Open Space Committee, Nicholas Rodenhaus, return to expire June 15th, 2025. Kelly McClintock, return to expire June 15th, 2026. And for the Veterans Agent, Veterans Grave Officer, and Veterans Burial Officer, Diana Hook, return to expire June 15th, 2026. Item number five is Farm Road. Brian Moore and Neil McPherson will be here. Item number six is Annual Town Meeting for 2023, discussion regarding Town Meeting Quorum. Item number seven is consideration of routine business, select board reports, and town administrator reports. Okay, thank you very much. Do I have any uh, revisions uh, to the agenda tonight? Paul. No, I was gonna talk about the schedule and the consent agenda when you get to it. Uh, I move approval of the agenda. Okay, but you, the schedule you're talking about is the next meeting dates or what schedule yes. are you? Uh, yeah, okay. the next meeting dates. Okay. Um, well, do you want to, the next meeting dates are listed here. Do you want to, um, before we, we, you've made a motion. I to can ask for a second. Agenda. But, oh, you're just approving it? You're not revising? No, I'm approving the, the, the agenda just, just read as being the agenda for the meeting. All right. My apologies. Then the first item you call will be the consent agenda. And All right, I got you. I have a comment. So, so I have a. I need a second for approving the agenda for the meeting. I did. I second. misunderstood, Paul. Exactly. Marion. Aye. George. Aye. Paul. Aye. Eric. Aye. And I am as well. So, sorry for uh, being slow on the uptake, Paul. So um, under the consent agenda, you have a. A revision to the um, next meeting dates is that? Yeah. So a, a few a few weeks ago, at, at Eric Johnson's request, he had some meetings coming up and so on. We went to first and third. Uh, well, no, we meet every two weeks. We meet every two weeks. Yeah, it reset the way it was. So this fall, at some point in like the winter, yeah. I think it was January, we reset off a week. So it's back to the yeah. cycle that we used to be at. But it's not first and third, it's every two weeks. It's just we shifted the starting point by one week. And well, if you look at May and June, for example, that's yeah. the first and third and the first and third. And in any event, 
on, on May 18th and June 15th, I have other commitments. I have an annual town meeting and I have a trial in Superior Court on those dates. So I'm wondering if we can vary the Thursday schedules for May and June. Well, May's not even listed here yet. I have May 4th and May 18th on the meeting schedule timeline that was in my packet. Yeah, but it's not on the agenda. It's not on the uh, consent agenda section. The, the schedule was moved to accommodate Eric. So you're asking us to not accommodate Eric to accommodate you? I, I, I guess. Meetings, and I'm, I'm wondering whether Eric would be out of sorts for that those dates in May and June. I think we changed it because he had some things going on. Are they both in June, Paul, your conflicts? No, one is May 18th and one is June 15th. Let me see, let me, let me, let me project out my public meetings that I have, because I'm frankly not sure about those dates. We also may have to do this. Uh, when is the board changing? When's the election? May 9th. May 9th. Yeah. Can't wait. George. 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 Yeah, George. How many hours I, is it, George? <laughs> I, I, I have to add that on June 15th, I am out of town as well. I might solve it. All right. So why don't we, we're, but we're meeting on the um, 20th is our next meeting. So why don't we discuss it on the 20th and, and uh, everyone can bring their calendars mm -hmm. and Eric can uh, look at his schedule. And on the 20th, we'll look at, see what we can do. And not that I want to predict an election, but do you want to involve Steve in the discussion? Uh, no, I, no I got... well, a junior person doesn't get any input, right? No, I, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's really going to affect, you know, him as well. Yeah. yeah. Likely. Likely. So why don't we uh, at least uh, get our schedules together by the 20th and we'll, we can look at it and entertain whether it's... Um, All right. Some, it, it's an awkward time, though, because, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend, too, and then the, all the June dates come right after that, so... What, day, what state Memorial Day? It's not my calendar. I think it's the 30th or something. I forget, but... June 30th? Uh, no, May, no, May. May, May. That's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Is it? Then it must be the 29th. Okay. So in view of putting this off to the 20th, I move for approval of the consent agenda. Okay. okay. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Marion? Aye. George? Aye. Paul? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I am I as well. Okay, we have uh, Sam Nelson and Janet Walsh here, who I actually helped uncrate some planters today with. <laughs> and people need to go. I did go look at those benches. They're phenomenal, but they're insanely heavy. I couldn't believe it. So uh, take it. Take take. You want to take um, share your screen, Janet, or Sam? I think Sam's going to share. Okay, go for it, Sam. Sam's muted. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, just, he's just trying to share, I think, first before he figures out the audio part. I think Sam's talking. Still muted, Sam. still muted. Yeah, you're still you're still muted. Do you need us to unmute you? Sam, you're muted. There Got you it. are. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you want to share your screen? And let's see. Which one is? It's the green green button at the bottom center. Yeah, I got to share the screen. I'm just looking and for And then some... pick, uh, usually you pick display or. Which one is this? You need to have your PowerPoint open first. That's the one. I'm sure. oh. Hold on, it's it can be hard to figure out which one is the one that you want to pick. Do you want me to share it? I can do that. I'm trying to figure out how many Dan's we have on this call, too. <laughs> oh. I don't. Do um, you have it, Marion? Yeah. 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 Why don't you Why don't you bring uh, it up? I think we have a, a we may have an updated version. Um, oh. Sam, do, it's a couple of nothing oh. major, but I, do you want me to share it, Sam? Sure. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I think Sam has just started sharing, I believe. Looks like if you click on this. All right. Go ahead, Janet. You want me to turn? Sure. Go ahead, Janet. I'm sorry about that. No oh, worries. No worries. This was a great set of slides. I, I, I read the hard copy, so I'm excited to see them up on the screen. Great. Well, if we can yeah, find it, you'll. We're going to be excited to see them too. <laughs> See, I just need to see if I'm picking the right one here. I think so. Um, let's try this and see what happens. You tell me what you're seeing. We are seeing. I think it looks right, but you need to blow it up to. There you go, and then put it. You're in. You're displaying your desktop instead of the actual software itself. Yeah. yeah. If that matters to you, just make sure you don't have anything sensitive open. Like and then this? you need to. That's yeah. perfect. Perfect. Uh, you have to go. You have to go back Start to the, the first beginning. slide. Got yes, it. the first slide is really beautiful. I think you should show all the voters that one. Go oh, back further. Back, back, back. She, she knows the slides, Paul. She knows the slides. <laughs> the, the aerial view. By the way, that's the bench I was talking about right there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There well, you, you go. got it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, thank you, that. Janet. I'm not all much right. of a person, so there you go. We're, we're using this slide for the, the town campus and Sean's replacing the roof of town hall. So we're using it for both purposes tonight. Yes. Like we are much better landscapers than we are uh, high tech yeah. people. Um, That's right. So uh, thank you everyone. My name is Sam Nelson. I'm co-chair of the town campus improvement project here tonight with Janet, our prime designer. And it's our pleasure to give you an opportunity to give you an update on the ARPA Town Campus Improvement Plan that the Select Board approved last year. Uh, next. Okay. Uh, so the agenda looks a little bit long, but we're gonna go through as quickly as we can. We wanted to give you first a little bit of an update on the library landscape progress, and then go through with a recap of uh, the town campus problems, our design goals, some highlights of the particular design, um, our schedule for this coming year and some ideas for future plans. Next. So um, as you've uh, walked around the library uh, landscape project, you've noticed that it is all cleaned up. The construction is gone. Some new planters have arrived. As Jeff said, the benches have arrived today. And probably the most anticipated news is that, especially after last year's drought, the library landscape planning is scheduled to begin on May 1st and to be completed by May 12th in time for the Arts and Craft Library Fair. Um, and we hope to be able to have a uh, uh, table with uh, some posters and explanations at the library for all the people who are gonna be at the fair so we can explain uh, exactly what has been done. And I wanted to give a shout out before we move on to Hadley Berkowitz, our prime designer for the library project, who has done an awful lot of work and, and devoted a lot of hours into creating this plan. Next. Um, just to give you a, a little bit of a recap on what we saw as the challenges of the town campus in order to give you a sense of what our priorities were. Um, the town campus uh, has been fragmented in planting. There is little unity of plan or design. The destinations are not well connected and pedestrian traffic is not encouraged. The hillside staircase linking the library with a town hall has been compromised and it can't be repaired. Uh, the landscaping and lighting is incomplete or in need of repair. And the West Campus, the form, former acoustic property, has been isolated and unused by the town. Next. So our goals are primarily threefold. First is to promote a more cohesive, cohesive uh, town campus feeling with improved function and appearance through landscaping, lighting, pathways, and other improvements. Second is to exist is to replace the existing hillside staircase with one that is more durable, easier to traverse, and respectful of the original design produced by Tom Worth. And third is to open up the West Campus to new community activities and events. 
Most of the recommendations we are making are all noted in the master plan. And we think that put all together, they are going to help make town campus a vibrant center of Sherburn once again. And at this point, I think I will turn it over to Janet to allow her to um, expand a little bit more on particulars of the uh, uh, project design. Thanks, ahead, Sam. Thanks Sam. Um, so I'm glad that most of you probably had a chance to look through the handout that was sent earlier. And some of this, everything was in there. You may see a few extra pictures here. Um, the first highlight that I wanted to mention was the hillside staircase, which is the staircase from um, between town offices and the library going up the hillside there. Um, as Sam mentioned, it's and sh showed pictures, it's been um, in sort of disrepair for a while. And we looked into, um, we had a group of designers, we looked into a lot of possibilities and we're excited that um, that this summer, we should be seeing a new a new um, stair. It's um, going to be more durable, easy, and safer to use, and attractive. Um, it's also a very neat design. Um, we had um, contributions from, as I said, a few designers, including Wes Worth, which is nice a nice tie into the old staircase, which was designed by his dad. Um, and it honors our, our Sherburn's history with the materials to be used. Um, an additional highlight of the campus plan is uh, the area around Town Hall and the central campus, which is uh, sort of everything other than the West Campus. We'd like to introduce new sidewalks and walkways to encourage people to, um, to walk and to, to get out there and, and enjoy the campus. Um, it'll be a nice way to connect buildings, to see everything from one place from the center and be able to, to access any building there. Um, outdoor lighting, as we mentioned, there's, if you look at the granite post, for instance, as an example, there's some lights that are missing, some lights that are broken, and we'd like to replace, get everything working again and replace um, the light fixtures, uh, keeping the granite, of course. Um, to have everything working and everything the same. Um, landscaping around the town offices itself, we'd like to beautify and continue to, to clean up. There's been more work done today, actually, when we were down there, um, emptying out the, the get, getting the um, benches out of the boxes. Uh, there's some nice work going on on the side of the building today. So um, work continues with the DPW as well. Um, and the last, thing to note is the um, the introduction of pocket patios, um, benches, places for social gathering to make it a nice place to be. Um, here is a plan of the pocket patio, which this is the back of town offices, um, the back entrance off the parking, which is now much more of a priority entrance. It's no longer, um, I don't think of it as the back of the building. I think of it as a, as a formal entrance. Um, and we'd like to really address that, clean it up, make it more attractive and more welcoming, make it feel more like an entrance. So this is a patio to the right of the entrance itself. Um, this would be utilizing materials. Also, you will see around campus um, through the staircase and through the, the bench pads that will hold the benches. Um, this is just a, a overall campus plan, which you've seen probably a couple of times here and there. Um, in this iteration, it, it shows the um, continu continuity throughout campus where there's the, the focus is really to introduce natives, uh, native plants, pollinator plants. Um, we do have, we are on the pollinator um, pathway for the library has been designated as a location and I'd love to see, you know, municipal campus and other town, town um, areas to be on the way station as, as well. I think it'd be a good statement for Sherburn. Um, this also shows um, the blue dots are where you would have some gathering areas, circulation, community areas, like areas to picnic. Um, areas for um, for children, learning areas, um, gathering spots, the, the patio 
for instance. And the, the last highlight is the West Campus, which is the old caustic property. Um, like to clean up the swale and the tree line that's between what used to be the border of the property that really delineates it and keeps it separate. Um, create some overflow gravel permeable parking up there and introduce native um, pollinator gardens along the pathways through the West Campus. Um, also to add some benches, as we talked about, and picnic areas um, and gathering spaces, resting spaces along the paths. Um, the idea really is to have a circulation area. It would be lovely to have that accessible um, for various activities such as um, you can see a, a picture of a gazebo here or a pavilion, something where we could do, you know, expand for the library fair or concerts or, um, you know, any group theater, outdoor theater, that kind of thing. Sam, did you want to take it from here? Sure. Thank you, Janet. Um, so this slide um, just uh, quickly gives an overview of all the people who are going to be involved in this project. Um, again, thank you very much to the select board for the $135,000 ARPA grant. Um, it will be uh, myself, Janet, uh, Mary Moore, and Marco Powicki who have been organizing this project. And uh, the other big uh, shout out that I want to make right now is to... Uh, uh, Public Works and Sean, who has been great in helping to coordinate this entire project. Uh, he is uh, head of this particular project since he is our department head, and he has just been fantastic in helping us get everything done. Next. Uh, give you a little bit of an overview of our schedule. Uh, phase one, which was the cleanup phase, is already completed. Uh, this was uh, taking place last year, and um, despite everything that was on Sean's plate, he was able to do an awful lot of work uh, with uh, Public Works money and uh, on his own initiative, but things that were consistent with our plan. As you know, he's done the, all the new paving around Town Hall, the new parking, the new uh, uh, road signs. You notice the island in the middle of the uh, parking lot of town hall has the new maple tree we've moved the historic millstone over there we're getting a new um, taller flagpole and um this soon is going to be looking really good out there next uh this spring uh the primary activities we're going to be doing which we're already a lot done today as uh janet mentioned uh public works was over today uh, working on the uh, uh, landscaping around Town Hall, filling in some of the areas that needed to have more uh, soil put into the area. Uh, we unpacked the uh, uh, planter boxes with uh, Jeff's help. And uh, the, another big thing that we're going to be doing is putting in a gravel parking lot over at the West Campus for uh, overflow parking. This will be a permeable overflow parking lot. Next. And then this summer is when we're going to get a lot of stuff done. Uh, that's when we are scheduled to have the new staircase put in. We will be putting in a lot more of the landscaping plants, the walkways and paths, trying to get all the light fixtures fixed. And uh, by then, we will pretty much have run out of the ARPA grant. Next. So we were thinking in terms of a phase four that could be done in the future of things that could be done over in West Campus, the former uh, caustic property. As Janet said, one of the things that could be done would be additional pathways, perhaps put in a children's woodland ramble, some more pollinator gardens. Uh, there's a wonderful apple orchard from many, many years ago up by uh, Route 16 that could be augmented and improved, and uh, an idea could be to add a multifunctional uh, covered pavilion for a variety of new uh, town activities. The next. And this uh, slide shows a little bit of, of uh, the plan over here that, uh, as you see, we are thinking about keeping the uh, main lawn open for events. 
around the center, we could do some more planting of perennial beds, pollinator beds. There's over here a children's garden, a woodland. Over here is the, uh, the new orchard, which could be expanded. And one of the ideas that we had could possibly be a pavilion or a gazebo up here to give us a little bit of covered space for um, allowing new meetings, um, activities of uh, perhaps marketplaces, uh, uh, schools could meet there, Council of Aging could meet there in nice weather. Uh, it could be a perhaps a very nice opportunity to have something new on campus. And I think that is uh, the update for right now. If you have any questions, Janet and I will be happy to answer any. Anybody have any questions? Would you yep. like me to stop sharing or leave it up there? Oh. Maybe take it down so we can see people, but Paul, okay. Paul has his hand up. So first, let me say, this is just wonderful. I'd love to see this campus come together. Thank you for, for doing this. In your presentation, there was a statement that a town landscape fund has been established by a private donor. Is there somebody that we could recognize and thank publicly? I think we may have to find out if it's publicly, yeah. Right. I, th I think we need to find out whether that wants to be disclosed at this point or not. But one of the things that we have been very successful doing with the library landscape project is soliciting donations. And we are hoping that we could do the same thing with a town campus project, particularly in light of the upcoming 350th celebration coming up. That might be a great way to generate interest and, and uh, solicit some more funds for some other activities or projects that we might want to do. I mentioned that because I think it's a wonderful thing that people would donate to their town to make these kind of improvements. So it's something that we want to encourage. Mm -hmm. And one way to encourage it is to give recognition and mm -hmm. thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's one thing to, to thank some nameless person. Thank you. I, I, I do at least want to say that, but I think it's even better we knew who it was and we can celebrate the fact that they, they made this gift and kind of encourage other people also to consider making donations to the town. I agree. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, we agree too. We just want to make sure that we uh, clear it with them as first. <clears throat> yeah, Mary? That's a good question. Uh, right. Uh, th that was a great presentation, Sam and Janet. Really well done. And the plan looks great. I have a couple of questions. Uh, one, one comment uh, following on, on Paul's comment, uh, you know, the, the playground over at, uh, what is it, Cemetery Lane, yeah. um, it's also, it was a big success that involved a lot of fundraising and part of the fundraising was uh, selling bricks, so to speak, you know, with, with inscribed names. And if there's any place like maybe under a future gazebo or something where people could be recognized that way, it's a nice touch and it brings in more smaller donations from people Excellent. throughout. Time. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And another uh, thought is, um, you know, remembering what we wrote in the master plan. I mean, this is just great, uh, but the, the, the bigger vision that you guys obviously um, are not uh, responsible for is connecting this campus to the uh, other parts of the town and you know knowing that um, uh, that DPW and the planning board are, are planning a big roundabout at the Maple Street uh, intersection I've been a little worried about how people are going to be able to walk and cross you know that roundabout I guess Sanger Street um, it, it would just be great um, if you come up with ideas as to how to connect this pedestrian wise to the rest of the town, as well as the business district, I mean, the, the little business district down by uh, Sherburn Fuel and, uh, and the shop and the church. And this is, you know, I'm not asking you to extend your project in any detail, but it's just something to bear in mind as you plan walkways, how would they connect further? into the town absolutely yeah um janet I, can you call up that one slide again the final one yeah mm -hmm. 
I just wanted to point something out. Well, while you're doing that, I would suggest Chris Owen has been doing some work on this front on planning board also, Marion, as you probably know. Uh, yeah, on the roundabout, yeah. No, and other things too. Oh, good. Well, that's great. I hadn't heard about that. Uh, yeah. and I, yeah. I also think with the roundabout, Marion, that's a way that right now it's actually probably harder to cross mm -hmm. the road than it will be once there's a roundabout there and real crosswalks and, and everything else once it's really improved. So, yeah, that's true. I, I hope that's true. One of the things that we thought was is very cool about this design is if you start over here, which is near the parking lot by Pilgrim <laughs> Church, you can now take this pathway around the library, across this parking lot, uh, across what Janet is making, this very interesting little walkway on this little center island here, right into West Campus and right up here to the gazebo. And if we have these pathways built around the side, you can see it'd be a really very nice walk all connected up here. Um, so um, that's all very going to be very well connected. And once we get the hillside staircase up here, that will also help connect this part of town down here and across and so on. So we are trying to be very cognizant and sensitive to the idea of, of promoting as much pedestrian traffic as we could in this new design. Great. Sam explained it well, and I'd like to just add, because I, I think it's so fun, is if you are on the West Campus or walking back, what would be this pathway from the parking or gazebo area. Um, I've done it many times where I've parked in central campus and walked over to the Pilgrim Church parking lot because it's a really nice it's a really nice walk. But if you're over on the west campus and you look back that direction, for instance, I was there at night one night and you see all the way across, you see the beautiful new library, you see all of the, the town offices and the police station, and then you see the church steeple like way behind it, both church steeples. So it's really, it's really cool. It does expand the campus. It, it kind of brings everything together and, and there's lovely walkways now down below the library. There's a great walk that connects that across the street. I think that's a fantastic comment, Arian, and I, I appreciate it because that is really something that we, it comes up a lot when we're thinking about this. We really want to make it a walkable, you know, a walkable town and have destinations that you look forward to. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Marian. Uh, Adam, you have your hand up. Yeah, Janet, could you maybe you could work with Forest and Trail and see if there's an opportunity to put a like a town trail map oh. in there and show how those trails are accessible from the spot. So it sort of integrates it into the overall green space. That would be really neat, Adam. I love that idea. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. We'll connect. You, you have another comment, Marion? No, I just like the other comment. No, I'm just getting people's hands back down so we can get get going here. Uh, so you could probably stop sharing again, Janet. Heidi. Thank you. Thank you guys for your questions. I don't think there's any more questions. So I think uh, that that will conclude that item. But thank you both for the hard work. Uh, are there any votes that are needed? Was, was this just for information or, or are there, you want me to make a motion? To approve the design, anything like that? I well, we already approved oh. the ARPA funding. We already did yeah. that. That was a small proposal before us. We did the ARPA funding. Yeah. I don't think that's necessary for anything. I don't think there's any vote required. Is there, Janet? I don't think so. I think this is more of an update. Okay. I don't, I don't think there's any vote required, but if you want to give us a ringing endorsement, we wouldn't mind that either. <laughs> <laughs> well, We'll give you a ringing endorsement. Thank you very Endorsed. much, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Consider it done. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, so next we have uh, Brooke and Christine uh, joining us, and they're going to talk about another event at the library, which should be equally fun. Uh, and we know that with all these plantings, the most important function of the library fair is it causes it to rain on that Saturday. You always know that. <laughs> So it's funny that you say that because we come to you today uh, to to hope that you do make a motion that will uh, ensure us only sunlight and no no strong breezes 
and the nice temperature of maybe 69 degrees. So if you could just put that on the docket. We'll, and we'll jinx it. I, I used to joke about having the library go give fairs in sub-Saharan Africa so that we could <laughs> avoid their, their problems with the severe drought. But anyway. Well, we know that this great group of minds here can, can help us in that search for, for good weather. But we won't take up much of your time. We know that you have a robust evening um, behind you and ahead of you. But we just wanted the opportunity to thank everyone so much. This whole town truly comes together around the um, Friends of the Sherborne Library Arts and Crafts Fair. Um, when Brooke and I took the reins last year, it was still at Jameson Field, understandably. And there was not one individual that we reached out to as we tried to figure out the landscape of the fair who did not welcome us with open arms, answered questions, went for follow-up calls, sent us documents. You know, Mary Moore is just a great one, one of the many great examples who continuously just um, shows this special level of pride in her community and um, just this light about citizenship uh, that makes Brooke and I so proud to be a part of this community, but also proud to be a part of this book fair. And uh, as you all know, the fair is returning to the library grounds this year. It's going to be our 51st arts and crafts fair. Uh, we already have over 60 artisans signed up for the event. And Brooke's going to share a little bit more about that. Um, but as Brooke and I are walking around the library grounds, even today, we could not get over how beautiful the building is, the ground is, um, and it's just going to be wonderful to bring this fair back home. And um, all of you are such a, an important part of that. So it is going to be, as it always is, on the Saturday before Mother's Day. It is going to be from 10 to 4. Um, there will only be sunshine and gentle breezes. And I'm going to hand it over to Brooke uh, to share a few more um, important points of what you can experience on this special day. Thank you. So exactly. So the fair is May um, 12th, correct? From 10 to 4. And we have over 60 vendors. Um, we have a great range of different categories from pottery, um, watercolors, painting, arts and media, um, home goods and crafts. We have some great pet vendors and then apparel and a lot of children's items as well. We're really excited this year to have a record number of food vendors. So we have um, our own Sherborne Nutty Bird granola. We have a barbecue truck coming, a coffee truck. We have lots of sweets and treats, ice cream, all the goodies for the kids, including um, Sweetie's Candy Bus from Holliston. Um, we're working with some of the local groups in town for from the middle school and the high school and doing an entertainment tent this year. We also have some from our surrounding communities, including um, Perez Martial Arts and the Natick School of Rock and a few others. Um, we're coordinating, collaborating with the Sherborne Fire Department on a touch a truck event that will be held in the parking lot directly across from the gas station. We're also going to have our town celebrity, Officer West, um, and that will bring a lot of traffic into the fair and make it a successful fair for our vendors. Because first and foremost, it's really important that our vendors have a wonderful experience. Our fair has been with us for 51 years and is a treasured part of our community, and we want to make sure our vendors have a good time as well as our community members. Um, we'll also be having I, our beloved um, geranium sale with Bogus yes, yeah. Garden Club and um, the Sherborne Library plant sale. Um, and it'll our, be a great event. Yep. Our friends at the library have been so incredible to work with. The library will be open during the event. Um, so like today, today was actually the first day that I went back into the library and was just astounded at its beauty. And I can only assume that uh, while people are getting their pottery, their their pillows, their snacks, their barbecue, um, they're going to want to take this great opportunity to just go and see this beautiful building and everything in it. Um, our library friends are so welcoming. They're thinking of crafts that they can do with the children. Um, they've been working with us on updates, different ideas, such a wonderful group of people to work with. Um, and we just, I think it's going to be a very magical day, um, fingers crossed, and we hope that you all join us and, and stop by and grab something to eat or pick up a present that you need for someone, and, um, and we're happy to answer any questions if you happen to have any at this time. 
Well, well, I actually have one, Christine. Um, I'm, I'm assuming given that Mary Moore is uh, helping George Fitz with the 350th uh, celebration planning, I'm assuming that they'll have a tent there. Is that the plan? They usually have done that. For so that, I'm not for, I'm not quite sure if that has been decided yet, but we can definitely follow up with her on yeah, that. Yeah, I think it, we want to promote the make people more aware of the that we're planning this 350th celebration and we can perhaps contribute. Sometimes Georges have hats or coasters for sale and things like that. But great. I'm pretty sure that you'll hear from Mary and you might not have to reach you No, know, and we would we would welcome that, yeah. sir. We yeah. would welcome that we have um areas set aside for community booths. Mm -hmm. They are free of charge yeah. because we want to ensure that our you know, volunteers yep. in the community are, are getting all the exposure that they can to new members. So that would be lovely to have them join. Yeah, well, I'm just looking around. I don't see either one of them online tonight. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you Katie? all. Just uh, just looking at my calendar here. Uh, May 12th is a Friday. May 13th. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I was, I was second guessing. No worries. <laughs> Thank you All for right. the banner. I'll be that. Then. We know that the banner is correct. I think that's the most important thing. The banner is correct. <laughs> Jeannie has helped us with that. Jeannie's another one. Jeannie is the backbone of the Arts and Crafts Fair as well. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Everyone have a great night and hope to see you Bye. at the fair. So our next uh, agenda item is a series of um, appointments. The first one is the um, finance director, town accountant. Do you want to lead us off on that, Jeremy? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so um, based on some past discussions with the board, um, we advertised uh, the position of finance director, town accountant um, publicly um, as an opening uh, back in January. Uh, a search team uh, was conveyed by myself, uh, which consisted of, of Jeff, your, your chair, uh, Dan Sickle, chair of the advisory committee, myself and Diane, our assistant town administrator. Uh, that team reviewed the submitted resumes in con consultation with the town's HR consultant, Jennifer Thompson of Capital Strategic Solutions. Uh, we actually met with Jen and, and kind of reviewed as a team uh, the, the resumes and, and qualifications of the folks that submitted application. Uh, after screening those resumes, uh, the search team uh, conducted interviews with two candidates. Um, that Those were conducted on March 28th. Um, and as a result of those interviews, uh, the search team is pleased to recommend for appointment Debbie Seifring, who has been your interim finance director for some time now. Uh, we're recommending uh, her for the, the permanent position of finance director town accountant um, for a three-year term, uh, commencing um, with your affirmative vote. So moved. Do I have a second? Yes, second. Yeah. I would Just also... Um, can can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, now, what do we have to do? We have to do like I know we haven't done anything in executive session. I guess we negotiate a contract in executive no. session after we vote, do this vote, or is no? This different? isn't a contracted position, George. Oh, okay. The employee. And what I would uh, I was just going to make a friendly amendment to Paul's motion, which is that we would um, have uh, authorized Jeremy to to complete the details in terms of the contract. You mean the uh, the, uh, position. The, the the terms of oh, the hire, of the position uh, hiring position? There, it isn't a contract. A contract accepted. Accepted. Okay. Your proposed amendment is, is accepted as part of the motion. I appreciate it. I just wasn't sure how it worked. I, I yeah, no yeah. This isn't just, a con contract. It's not a contract. I, okay. I wondered the same thing too. Bef so I, did, I, vote, did, did you go ahead, Paul? I, I just want to say that I think it's. It, I, I, I like Deb and I like the idea that we're promoting from within that people should have career paths in the town and they can come to work for the town and, and believe that they can uh, move forward and get bigger and better positions. Yep. So I like so, the idea of uh, somebody who's, who's, who's worked well being able to, to step up to a, a new position. So, uh, 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 She's been acting finance director, interim finance director. It's not, it's not a new position, but, but be made the finance director. Yeah. I think that so, sends a good message to every employee. 
Yeah, we're we're very pleased too. And uh, Deb, you know, we had good discussions, and um, I just want to thank you for hanging in there with us. So, <laughs> thank um, you. Did you second that, George? I guess we're just yeah. I'll, I'll I'll second it. That's fine. We're, the motion is to allow Jeremy to to work out the the details of hiring uh, Deb as uh, finance director. Yes. So, uh, Marion. Aye. George. Aye. Paul. Aye. Eric. Aye. And I am I as well. Jeff, since Thanks, Deb's Deb. here, did you want to say anything? Or? Yeah, I was just, that was the next thing I was oh. going to say. Go <laughs> ahead. Uh, do you want to say anything? Yeah. Oh, well, I really, I just want to say thank you. I'm looking forward to continuing on. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is Open Space Committee. Uh, we have two people named Nicholas Rodenhaus and Kelly McClintock. Terms expire in 25 and 26. Are either one of them here? See Nick Rodenhaus is here. There's Nick. Do you want to say uh, hello, Nick? Or any comments? You're muted. There you go. Sure, I'm, I'm muted. No, I'm glad to uh, have the opportunity to apply. Interested in your uh, assessment of my application. And uh, you may have seen from my application that I think Sherburne is a fa fantastic place for open space. And I'd love the opportunity to contribute to uh, sustaining that. Excellent. And I, I look, approval. I look quickly. I didn't see Kelly here, but uh, we've seen him before. So uh, do I have a second? Second. OK. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, Marion? Oh, definitely. I. Uh, he's highly qualified, and it's a great appointment. Yep. George? Aye. Paul? I agree with Marion. Aye. <laughs> Eric? Aye. And I am I as well. Thanks again. Um, next is um, veterans agent Deb Hook is uh, uh, for a term to expire in 2026. So moved. Did we okay. vote? When, I'm sorry, did we vote in Kelly and Nicholas at the same time there? Yes. That's yes. what I thought we did. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right. I'm almost, yeah. Just, and only one of them was here. I don't see. Yeah. Is Diana here? We all know Diane. I, I would just. I know. I yeah. I, well, I was just going to see if she was here. But yes. No, I, I don't think did. she's here tonight. Yep. So uh, do I have a motion for no. Diana? So I'll move. move. All right. Uh, Marion. Aye. George. Aye. Paul. Aye. Eric. Aye. Excellent. And I am I as well. So now the next uh, item number five is the farm road. And uh, we'll have an open discussion. Um, but we'll start off, I guess, with Brian Moore and Neil McPherson. Are you guys here? Looking for you. Hi, Neil. Is Brian here. I saw them earlier. There's Brian. Are you with us, Brian? <laughs> there you are. It's Brian. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, that Hi. Was Good you. evening. <laughs> is Neil here also? I didn't see Neil. There he is. I think he's somewhere. Yeah. 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 I found him. Okay. I so... rearranged the, the images so I can keep track of people. So you see, we have a pretty good contingency here tonight from our neighborhood. Yeah. to make some opening remarks. And I think Neil's going to comment as well. And maybe some of the other people would like to weigh in also. Um, first and foremost, let me just say, we're thrilled about the library project getting completed. And I thank everyone on the board for all their support during that project. It's just one of the many aspects of Sherburn that my wife and I are particularly fond of. Um, but unfortunately, I'm here tonight about another matter uh, related to some things in town that have been troubling and concerning for me as a citizen in our neighborhood. Um, so for those of you who do not know me, my name is Brian Moore and my wife and I have lived in Sherburne for the last 15 years or so, raising our three children here and enjoying many of the benefits Sherburne has to offer, such as the library. We have been heavily involved in volunteerism in town and have both served the town as elected officials in some capacity. We've asked to be heard here as members and representatives of the Farm Road, Great Rock Road and Peckham Hill Road neighborhoods. As you all know, our neighborhood is one of many neighborhoods struggling with a pending development that includes massive multi-dwelling units on relatively small single family parcels under the auspices of MGL chapter 40B. The concerns we raise tonight relate not only to your board, but to other boards and commissions that answer to your board. We raise these concerns as voters 
who have elected you who sit on this board to represent us in all things Sherburn. We've also elected you who sit on this board to represent us and our interests in your dealings with these boards, commissions, and committees. With our votes, we have placed our trust in you to represent us and our interests, the interests of our neighborhood and our neighbors. And we want to make sure we explicitly describe what those interests are and specify what they include. We feel this need to inform your understanding as to how truly important these interests are to us and this community to provide you the opportunity to better serve your constituents, our community, as our delegated representatives moving forward with your actions and in your decisions. I'm going to speak briefly about how unique and important surface water and groundwater are to our community because I am a practicing professional geologist and a Massachusetts LSP with over 30 years of experience in chasing contamination in soil, groundwater, surface water, sediment, bedrock, indoor and drinking water supply wells. Until recently, I also served as the chair of the town's Groundwater Protection Committee, and as an elected water commissioner for the town. I believe these experiences make me qualified to speak on these matters, as I am intricately aware of the surficial and hydrogeologic conditions in and around the proposed Farm Road Homes development. As you all know, not only our neighborhood, but almost the entire town of Sherburn relies solely on private water supply wells or public wells with no centralized sanitary sewer system. The open spaces in our neighborhood in particular um, serve as the headwaters of Sewell Brook and as the source of much of the groundwater that is consumed by the public and private water supply wells situated within, within the town center district as evidenced by the zone two, which extends right through the middle of our property. For the record, these are the resources and represent our interests as a neighborhood. Again, let me repeat that to make sure everyone hears it. These resources, including the town forest, the groundwater, the wetlands, the water courses, the surface water, the wet meadows, the pond, the intermittent streams, the bogs, the swamp, the springs, all of them. These resources are our interest because they provide us with clean water for drinking. And without these features, we would not be able to pump water out of the ground that is suitable for drinking. With nothing else as an alternative, this is why these interests are so dear to us. As our elected representatives, it has always been our expectation that you would do your best to protect groundwater quality and quantity so that we can continue to utilize this resource. Yet as a neighborhood, we do not believe that this resource is being protected. Time and time again, our efforts to raise concerns about proposed development, activities that run contrary to such protections are summarily brushed aside or outright ignored for administrative reasons. These actions are failing our community by not protecting our interests. Our experience is, the town siloed, is that the town's siloed approach to permitting has resulted in a disjointed permitting process unique to this town and a dysfunctional oversight by the boards and committees that have been tasked with protecting our resources for drinking water. We've spent countless hours in front of these boards and experience firsthand how their independent administration has failed to protect our interests. I encourage all of you to review the PowerPoint presentation previously prepared and provided with many of these boards and your own board as to the presence of a water course along the northern side of Farm Road in the middle of the proposed Farm Road Homes development. We believe the work already permitted and conducted within this part of our neighborhood has already affected this feature and that failing to protect these resources along Farm Pond have changed the hydrogeology and the geology, excuse me, the hydrology and the hydrogeology of this basin, meaning it has altered how groundwater and surface water accumulate and flow through this system. We're extremely concerned that these failings have resulted in a greater risk to our drinking water and are extremely frustrated that all of our attempts to speak out in furtherance of protecting our drinking water supplies have not garnered more attention from these boards and committees. Our efforts have included hiring experts and attorneys at considerable personal expense to review and comment on proposed activities in front of these boards and committees at great uh, over the last two years. In doing so, we have been backstopping the town boards and committees, providing valuable insight and opinions at no cost to these boards 
essentially giving them the scientific and legal opinions that would serve to better protect our resources and drinking water, all to no avail. It has been extremely disparaging to have our efforts and concerns summarily brushed aside while at the same time learning of private communications or meetings with the developer that had fallen outside of the public domain. I, for one, would consider any communication with this developer uh, outside of a public forum as a missed opportunity to properly serve your constituency and a failure to protect our interests. It is similarly frustrating to have our con continuously increasing list of concerns being filtered through agents or administrators, and for some unknown reason, our ability to get them recognized as viable agenda items at public meetings is decreasing with time. We are here tonight to simply ask the select board to consider an opinion that the development of the 5355-65 farm road parcels has already changed the hydrogeology of this part of our neighborhood and increased the potential threat to our drinking water. We also believe and it has been confirmed by our hired expert in an open public meeting of record and recorded on Zoom that plans for this development previously provided to the town would likely impair or eliminate our ability to rely on groundwater as a source of potable drinking water due to nitrate loading within this nitrogen sensitive area. As if that were not enough, this week open test pits were being conducted along the farm road side of the property that's being subject of the farm road homes development and within plain view of the public right of way of farm road. Groundwater was observed within a few feet of grade, meaning that more likely than not, Groundwater is much higher than it was observed during the previous testing conducted the, during the tremendous droughts of 2020 and 2022. Especially in 2020, groundwater was in the lower 10th percentile of where it normally sits. It's no wonder that the permitting process was such an ease for his engineer to get through the process. If we had our druthers, the board would immediately reach out to the Board of Health and request them to have their agent collect current groundwater elevations from the wells which exist at that property. This information combined with the flooding elevations of the pond which exists now would all help to better inform opinions about the current hydrogeology of the area. I would offer that such an action would actually serve our interests and in the interest of our neighborhood in protecting the viability of our drinking water. I would also request the select board to consider directing the Conservation Commission to reconsider the implications of recent impending development on those portions of the property subject to protection under the act, the Wellens Protection Act. The commission has stated that any further development actions at these parcels would obviously necessitate additional new filings with their commission, yet we believe our concerns about the boundaries of those areas subject to protection under the act have not been addressed in a satisfactory manner. More specifically, the act contains an unless and until provisions that we believe have been triggered by the flooding of the pond and farm road and the commission's relatively brief deliberations on these matters have certainly not satisfied our concerns. In closing, and especially in light of recent events, I for one am sick and tired of feeling intimidated when I try to stick up for my own rights and try to protect my water and drinking water supply for the future. I hope to work together with this board and other boards in a professional manner to address our neighborhood's concerns related to this valuable resource. With this in mind, as a resident, I feel both emotionally and physically exhausted by this process to a point of collapse. The inability to stick up for our residents under these circumstances is reprehensible. I understand the desire to avoid litigation conflict as evidenced by my own resignation from the GBC and from my own elected positions precisely for this reason. But in this instance, my concerns and desire to protect my own drinking water and then drinking water of my neighbors and the neighborhood prevent me from simply rolling over and playing dead. We as individuals, as a neighborhood, and as voting members of this town are asking you, our elected representatives, to conduct yourselves in such a manner as to better protect our interests, specifically our interests in our source of drinking water, the only source of drinking water we have. We respectfully request that you remind all town boards, commissions, and departments that the burden of proof for compliance with state and town regulation remains that of an applicant. And in instances where the potential for non-compliance exists, no conditions or exemptions should be awarded without due consideration of how those actions may impair our ability to maintain our drinking water for now and for the future. As individuals, as a community, and yes, even as a town. Thank you for hearing my comments. 
Thank you, Brian. Did you, uh, Neil, did you also have some introductory comments you wanted to make? So I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfectly. Thank you. So first, I wanted to say that I'm speaking as a resident, right? And, and I want to echo Brian's comments. And I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing this conversation to take place because I believe myself and many of my neighbors are very frustrated with many of the things that have been occurring in this area. While I'm also concerned about the proposed impact of the development, I want to speak about a different issue. And I want to speak about the public safety issue that this town has created by the blocking of a pipe that formerly went out to 55 Farm Road. I think everybody on the board should be or might be aware of the fact that after that pipe was, was blocked off by the town, that there was an auto accident and that auto accident occurred on January 27th. That auto accident was a result of one lane of farm road being completely iced over and someone who crashed into a tree. The police report clearly indicates that the water was coming down the street and froze because it was coming from a storm drain. So my first question becomes, or I should say this, and actually I'll save that question to the end. So the flooding continued, all right? And I understand that the town looked at the flooding issue, but two letters were written after that accident and they were sent to the town administrator. Neither of those letters were responded to. So my first question is, is that an acceptable level of customer service for residents who pay the taxes in this community? And my response would be no, right? Clearly people are concerned, that's why letters were written. Number two, I, when it comes to uh, the actions, Jeff, as you're aware, Ryan Moore had requested from Jeremy to get on the agenda to talk about this issue. Yes. We went ahead, we contacted you because mm -hmm. we had to do a public session because we were getting nowhere or Brian was getting nowhere with the town manager or town, I should say town administrator. And thank you because you were able to get us a date. But after that meeting, you and I spoke and we agreed that we would push this off to April. And as you're well aware on Friday, it is Friday, March 15th. All right, I should say it was the 17th. The DPW went out and plugged the pipe from 64 Farm Road, causing water to back up in that basement. I would like to know who was responsible for that decision. It put that resident in harm. Does anybody realize that although notice was given, he was promised to be told before this happened, is this the way we treat our residents? The people at that resident have done nothing wrong. They bought a house. The town of Sherwin plugged a pipe. They caused the accident. They have now pushed this burden onto this individual. I understand that their pipe and discharge, which has been there for 35 years, is illicit. There should have been a meeting. Sean Colleen promised, and, and, and I believe that the resident Josh is on here and I spoke to him within the past two hours. He told me he was promised that he would be notified before that was plugged up. That did not happen. So I'd like to know who's gonna be accountable and if this is the way we treat our people in this town. Because to me, that is completely unprofessional. It is unfair to two people who did nothing wrong. The town created this issue. Lastly, I would like to know, what are we gonna to do to fix this? We now have a problem that these storm drains overflow. When the, the pipe was sealed off from 64 Farm Road, it didn't solve the problem. And I have a video if you'd like to see, all right? There was a stream of water going down the street the next day. So if they thought that was gonna solve the problem, it didn't. Now we have a problem that will continue for the future that jeopardizes the safety of the traveling public. So few questions, number one, who authorized the plugging of the pipe? Was there research done? Did anybody talk to town council? Did an engineer look at it? What was the rush to go ahead and plug the pipe, which is a discharge to 55 Farm Road, which caused all of these issues? Who authorized the pipe to be closed on the 17th? I should say, uh, to uh, Josh and Sarah's house at 64 Farm Road. Who's gonna be responsible for jeopardizing their safety? Just think about if the oil tank in that basement, the house was built in the 1800s, floated up 
and spilled in the basement was pumped out to the yard. Is the town gonna to be responsible for that? And these are the decisions that we should be making. So I would like to know, all right, what type of research was done when that was plugged up? Number two, who was aware and authorized the pipe to be plugged up, even though a letter was sent, so I wanna acknowledge that, that it was illicit and Josh has acknowledged that. Who approved that pipe to be plugged up and jeopardize the safety? Because I feel someone should be accountable for these behaviors and the board should be embarrassed with the way this has been handled. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that, uh, I see Josh is here. Is there anyone else that would wanna speak before we open the discussion? I don't see anyone else's hands raised. So I guess I would start off, uh, and I realize that this is a very difficult situation. And I've had discussions with all of you, I think, about it. And I am glad that you're here tonight. And I'm very glad that you uh, presented uh, this. I'm sorry, Mr. Waldron. Uh, I was trying to raise my hand if I could just comment as well. Oh, sure. I didn't see it. Uh, who, who is that? Uh, my name is Vivek. Sorry. My name is Vivek Kadiala. I'm at 8th Great Rock Road. That's fine. Go ahead, Vivek. I didn't see your hand up. No problem. First, I'll make it brief, but thank you for hearing our comments. I would just like to echo everything Brian and uh, Neil have stated. Um, my appeal is simple, that we just protect the due process that we are entitled to as residents of this town, as in its dealings with how we protect our citizenry, uh, as it deals with public safety and protection of our public resources such as, I mean, the drinking water, there's no way around that. Like it's, it's, it's not a non-negotiable resource here. Um, and my appeal is simply to protect the due process that we were due and the transparency in how the town deals with uh, allowing responsible development while keeping in mind the people who will have to live around it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vivek. And I, uh, Rob, uh, did you want to speak also? Yes, thank you, Jeff. I, I would just like to say, you know, I, I've talked to a couple of old timers that were lived on Farm Road back in the 70s, and they talked about the problems with the water running down Farm Road. And frankly, this stream and this water course has been here long before houses and roads were built. And I, I live right next door to Josh, and my kids get on bus 24 every morning. And frankly, the idea in January, February, as a car of a car trying to stop behind a, the bus 24 with the red lights on hitting this ice, creaming a kid, trying to get on the bus or getting off the kid, getting off the bus terrifies me. You know, we've already had one accident with an ambulance taking someone to the hospital, as Neil has mentioned. And frankly, if someone else is hurt or God forbid someone else is killed, this will be a tragedy. And, and we all know that this water needs to run under the road and it needs to be fixed before next winter. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Josh, you're next. Thanks, Jeff. I, I don't. I don't want to say much other than echo what everybody else has said. I just. I. I just implore the the board to use some common sense. I understand the town commissions are set up in these silos, and it's often difficult to get those silos to communicate with each other. Um, there's there's a bigger issue here. We all know what it is, and 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 I just please please can we use some some rational and logical thought here to to put these pieces together and see what's actually going on we, we all we all know it <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear we know who the players are and uh we know what the risk is to both the public health and safety in terms of driving on farm road and also the as brian is, is clearly the expert to our to our drinking water and our and our health and safety so uh thank you jeff i appreciate the time sure no problem arthur Hi, good evening. Um, thanks again. I echo what Neil said. Thank you for holding this meeting. Uh, my name is Arthur Fenner. I live at 58 Farm Road. Um, so uh, um, I, I guess, um, I mean, I've lived in town for, I guess, almost 10 years, maybe more, plus or minus, and everything was fine, calm, normal. None of the, there was no flooding. There were no issues. There was no problem with the water course or anything like that. Uh, no problem with anyone's drinking water for all this time. And then um, there was a proposal and some steps taken to make a development. And lo and behold, we're getting all these problems. And I'm not suggesting that people don't have the right to develop or work in their own property. Uh, we ourselves have uh, made some additions to our house. Uh, we've invested in the neighborhood and I'm, that's fine if people want to invest in the neighborhood. But there's a certain point where people's own rights and property rights end. 
And that's where things are trumped by such things as public safety and public health. And I couldn't say what Brian said as eloquently as he did, uh, but the bottom line is that this is our drinking water. This is how we live. This is what we, what's required for us to be in this town. And if that's in any way threatened, and there's evidence, expert evidence that it is, the town has an absolute obligation to protect that now and not wait until later on when, when all our wells are, or, or uh, Brian's well is, um, is infected. Uh, then it's too late. Uh, and I understand that's not an issue necessarily that the board of that the select board can can manage, but the select board can influence other boards, such as the board of health, uh, to do more about this. And we've tried, and we've been stonewalled, like Brian said. And I think the select board needs to step in and exercise um, some of its rights to encourage other boards to take a stronger look at this, because at some point it'll be too late, and then everybody will wonder how that happened. Um, and then also with public safety, uh, that's something that just it it trumps the these the other concerns of someone's. Uh, personal rights, and we can't have a situation where there's a danger to public safety that's created. Um, I asked the select board to, I mean, I know you're already aware of these uh, developments and of some other issues, but to keep a, a, a close eye and have additional scrutiny uh, on them because they're already having a detrimental impact on this part of the, in this neighborhood, uh, and on things that supersede individual rights like public health and public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, Karen, you're next. Yes, hi. I'm to a resident of Farm Road, and I'm just here to support my um, my neighbors and my neighborhoods. And I think Brian Moore had mentioned this, but I just want to reiterate that it's not only the concern of this neighborhood at 52 at, on Farm Road and Great Rock Road, but it's also this developer has purchased three other land plots around Sherborne. So it's like, I think what we set, you're setting a precedent here, right? In terms of actions taken to um, protect our neighborhood, um, to protect our groundwater and to protect um, our public safety with the impact that developments have um, on these neighborhoods. In particular, since we are a town as Rob Byrne pointed out, where we um, have buses you know, that transport our children. And my kids note every morning when there's ice on the ground and how that affects, you know, them getting on and off that bus and then the other cars around them. Um, thank you. Thank you, Karen. And I don't know, iPhone 5, uh, could you identify yourself, please, before speaking? Uh, my guess is that's me, is Tim Tapley of 17 Great Rock Road. Okay, yeah, that, you just show up as the iPhone 5 on the screen. Uh, that's uh, that's fine. Go not ahead. not trying to be incognito. I promise. <laughs> no, no, uh, Tim. You said is that right? It is Tim. Yeah, thank you. And I just uh, for, first ahead. of all, first of all, in full support of everything that everyone has said, and uh, thank you for Brian and for Neil for uh, for putting so much time and effort into getting to the root of this issue. I just want to note, and I'm sure Town Council will be advising uh the board appropriately on this issue but you know the board because this is being recorded is there's now a piece of evidence and uh, mr murchison as well as the board are now on notice of the dangers that are being created by this project and so if someone were to be injured because of an ice flow issue as neil uh, described earlier and rob talked about um the, because the board notice and the and the developers on notice of the, the issues they are creating. And if they fail to act and fail to correct the issue, it could be deemed gross negligence. Town Council will certainly tell you gross negligence could um, blow through any and pierce any corporate veil that uh, that the corporate might enjoy, but also could uh, create personal liability for any person sitting on this board. Caution that you consult with with town council on that issue. Should any board choose not to act and choose not to evaluate this matter fully, and therefore I would suggest that you do. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tim. I don't see any other raised hands, so I'm going to make a few comments uh, to begin with, and then uh, we'll have a few other people speak. First of all, um, I appreciate um, the passion and the frustration and all of the. Um, sort of uh, uh, concerns that everyone has. We all have that. We, we all we all are on private uh, water supplies in town and uh, all are affected by that. 
Um, one thing I would say though, is we're not here to discuss the development tonight because uh, that's a 40B project, which the town really doesn't have that much control over. Um, mm -hmm. the, the state uh, provided the 40B provisions to allow developers to sidestep a lot of local requirements because local regulations, because they wanted to encourage um, development, particularly of affordable housing. So the process by which the 40B project works, which you saw is we had an additional round of hearings. We submitted a letter in this case to Mass Housing and um, they are still uh, supporting the next step in the process for reviewing the development, which would be a full seeking the full approval of the Zoning Board of Authority. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, excuse me. So that's the next step. There's a formal process for evaluating uh, 40B projects, and that's not really the domain of the select board. We do provide comments and we integrate the comments, which we did to Mass Housing of all the various boards. So um, the select board wrote a letter to Mass Housing, the very lengthy one, which is on the website, explaining our concerns about the project which mirror a lot of the ones you had tonight. We certainly understand them all and they'll be taken, uh, the next step in the review process will be led by the ZBA and they'll get much more rigorous input from all the boards and committees in town. So as I said, we're not discussing the development tonight because that's really not, the purpose of this agenda was mainly to talk about the flooding on Farm Road. And that's what came up and, um, uh, we're not going to discuss how the flooding came to be. I'm a big person in uh, going from where we're at. So I think a number of you I've spoken to, uh, a number of the people that spoke tonight, I've already uh, met with and spoken to several of you. The the one pipe that was uh, uh, blocked was unblocked um, within 24 hours as soon as I found out about it. Uh, so that is no longer causing an immediate problem but we need to have a long-term solution to the flooding on Farm Road. And I'm certainly don't have the uh, hydrology experience, but I, I'm not at all convinced that the flooding is related to the project. I think the flooding is a issue that's been going on for a long time on Farm Road. But um, the way I sought to um, address the situation in a factual way, which I think is consistent with the comments we heard, was I asked, um, uh, our uh, new town administrator, uh, I think many of you have, have, have met or heard at least, Jeremy Marset, who is also the former DPW director in Natick. So this is his, his area of expertise. I asked uh, Eric Johnson, who as people know, is the city engineer for the town of Framingham. And this is also his area of expertise and he's a select board member. And Sean Colleen, who's our DPW director to look at the flooding on Farm Road and um, see what we can do to um, correct the situation and get at the root cause. Uh, so that's what's gone on. I think they have some preliminary ideas, but I'm not sure that they're um, willing to share the details tonight, but we'll find out in a few minutes. So they'll, they'll probably have some comments, but I think we need to separate the development from the flooding. Um, I don't, I don't think they're related. If they are related, we'll figure that out. But I think the flooding is a separate issue and it's a very serious concern. There was an accident as, as Neil pointed out and that certainly uh, was, was uh, not, not a good outcome and very risky. And we want to address the flooding in the proper way. And I think that the flooding issue for the little uh, I understand of it, it's been going on for 30 plus years. And there was perhaps uh, some things done in the past that need to be corrected. And that's where we stand on the analysis. So what I'd, I, what I'd like to do, I have a number of hands up, but before I do, I, I'd ask three people to look at um, the flooding situation. And um, Jeremy, do you wanna take the lead on that and just explain what you did? And I see George and Marion and Paul all have their hands raised. She'll talk in a minute, but they, they did a little bit of fact finding. So I'd like to get that out first before we have discussion if you don't absolutely mind. have jeremy go first thanks jeff um and you know i apologize for coming in in the midst of this i believe this this issue has been going on for for some time um and and certainly um would would love to chat with 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 folks about um you know timeliness of response and 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 the like in the past so 
we'll be reaching out to some folks to chat on that to, to make sure there's no misunderstandings. Um, we we did we have looked into um, Sean and I um, when this. I believe that th this has been an issue for some time. Uh, these catch basins were were installed um, as from the records that were made available to us were installed sometime in the, the 1970s, 1980s, um, it really to accommodate a foundation drain to number 64 um, Farm Road. Um, that foundation drain um, per uh, a, a sort of a somewhat recent um, town bylaw is classified as an illicit discharge um, and that there's no um, you know, record of the, that being formally approved, though it's been there for some time. So um, certainly, you know, that that needs to be taken into account that it's been there, uh, you know, uh, for, for some time. But um, some recent changes to the hydrology may be due to there, there was a large tree on, on the corner of the lot of 64 Farm Road that was was re recently cut down. That, that certainly could have been absorbing some of the water that was coming from this foundation drain. Um, there was some investigation um, by uh, Sean, our public works director, and his uh, engineer. He has a stormwater engineer that he uses AECOM. So I believe that happened sometime this past spring and summer. Um, that professional consultant came out and looked at um, these catch basins and its discharge um and to, to help to evaluate and help advise you know what to do with that that connection um and then and based on that um there was a determination sometime last summer um that the outfall could be um could be plugged in that those basins in the roadway were um were deemed by the engineer the, the town's consulting engineer to actually infiltrate in and there was no discharge coming out uh, across the street. So uh, they felt, in their professional opinion, they felt that that, that uh, outlet could be plugged and there, it would just continue functioning as, as it was. Um, but um, with the weather through this winter and, and, and the rain that we've gotten, lots of precipitation, it was a pretty, pretty dry summer. Um, but then coming into the winter uh, and the, the fall and winter, there's been a fair amount of uh, precipitation um, and it's obviously overwhelmed those catch basins at one point. Um, I believe since that happened, um, the town has taken some, some prompt action to, to help, um, alleviate that flooding and, and to try to come up with a solution, a long-term solution. Um, we did speak to town council and, and were advised to, to follow, um, notification through the illicit discharge bylaw of the community. Um, that that did happen, um, and we have investigated um, through um, talking with some of the the regulatory bodies what might be done to help address um, and and maybe make a different connection or some sort of on site infiltration of the the foundation drainage to number sixty four. So we've preliminarily looked at what would be sort of allowed through some of the the regulatory. Um, um, rules that are in place for such a thing. So um, not prepared to talk about the details per se, but um, there there is some opportunity to help um, you know better figure out how we could address uh, to everybody's satisfaction that foundation drainage um, and leave the flooding in the roadway. Um, I guess I'll leave it with that. I'm not sure if, if Sean or, um, or Eric has That's anything gonna else. You'd like to ask add. Eric first. Did, did you have anything you wanted to add, Eric? I mean, not a whole lot at this point. I think we understand some of the big picture details here. I'm a little concerned. I know um, we've heard a lot of statements uh, with a few of the speakers we heard here. Um, I think some pretty good points and some points I think that um, we need to respond to. No question about it. Some points that were maybe heightened with emotion and some outright false statements, to be honest with you. Um, I would actually encourage perhaps um, Neil, who I love, you know, and I'm friendly with Neil, but, um, you know, he said he had two points, but managed to ask 30 questions within those two points. Mm -hmm. I would actually maybe encourage, um, I don't know if you can, if all the abutters can consolidate with one person, whatever else, 
put stuff in writing and we can respond to it. at this point obviously we're not going to be able to go bang 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 and answer every single question we don't remember what they are you know what i mean it just came um came some up with them you know i think we can get if you know your question your concerns and questions absolutely um put them in there um you know we are definitely looking at this and i can tell you we're definitely looking for a solution um as you said we have people looking at it i'm drawing from my experiences between precedents and what we can do my focus frankly is on the um the current connection of 64 farm road um, into the existing catch basin and um, re resulting flooding and what what I can do to abate that. Um, you know, as far as the development, um, you know, that that I'm looking at as well, but really within my purview of, of the select board and, and what I can and can't do. I don't know how the select board can override the Board of Health and their opinion on public health and groundwater and discharge. They are actually the ones that are authorized um, to make opinions about that. And they're the ones who make opinions ultimately to the ZBA under a consolidated permit under the 40B. Um, you know, I could go on and on in multiple things there. Um, just I'd be a caution people on making some of the broad statements I think were made um, because frankly, they might harm your argument overall. I think I heard one person say, any discussion with the developer not in public forum is harmful to the public. I called the developer last week and I called him to say, hey, do you have any historic information about this connection? I'm not going to call him to a board of selectmen meeting, ask him that question, and then have him say, no, I don't have anything else, and put us behind a month and do what we're trying to do. So obviously, statements like that, you know, and the statements where the select board can, should um, conduct themselves better, I don't think are going to help the abutters' causes as we, as we move forward with this. But rest assured that, yes, I've met on site, I've looked up historic information, and we're working out ideas largely between Jeremy, Sean, and myself, and I'm you know, pulling in Jeff here and there. Um, other than that, like I said, if um, if you want, I think we were asked literally like 50 questions tonight. Put them in writing, and we can respond to them. Um, and uh, and like I said, on, on, in the background, we're working on an actual solution for this discharge. Okay, so I'm going to go through the select board comments, and then I'll go back to the public comments. So George, I think you're next. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to address some of the concerns that the abutters have with the development. And I think this is a historical thing. To be quite honest, this is one of the reasons I am not running for re-election. I'm going to be off the board next month. I am sick of the way our Board of Health and our Conservation Commission have put our town in this position. This property could have been one single house many, many years ago if our Board of Health didn't stop everything. We have a problem and we have no oversight from the select board over that Board of Health. We need more people to run for that board. It's always uncontested elections with the same people putting their friends and similar thought people on those boards. Conservation Commission, we tried to change up last year. I got accused of degrading somebody because I didn't want to reappoint somebody who had complaints against them. It's, it's got to stop. This is the problem in our town. We've got the same like-minded people running our Board of Health and Conservation Commission, which forces 40 Bs. And that's where the problem lies. Then we're forced on these developments on places like Farm Road, in hunting lane where they don't belong. So let's have people step up and run for some of these. Let's get some diversity of opinion on some of these boards and not just have environmental zealots running these boards and stop it and, and forcing us into 40 Bs as the only way we can do any development in this town. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. <laughs> Okay, uh, Paul. So I'm I'm surprised that all this activity has been going on for like a year, and wonder if there's like a file on this that I could read, and maybe from my legal background, there's something I can contribute towards a a solution. No, nobody in the neighborhood has brought this to my attention. Nobody has has complained to me. So I'm being caught here in a catch-up mode to try and figure out everything that's been going on. I appreciate that that uh, Eric and, and Jeff both have been working on this. Um, 
but I'm way behind you on, on trying to figure out all the, the details. Do we have a file on this that I could review? Is Can I contribute some uh, legal perspective to trying to find a solution? Would, would that be helpful to the board in any way? If so, I'm, I'm happy to donate some time. We can, we can certainly, there's a numerous files going back to the 1970s, Paul. I, I think the thing though, is it's really more of a technical issue right now than a legal issue. And we have involved uh, Chris Petrini in this issue, or it may have been Heather, someone from Petrini's firm. So I'm not sure that we need a, another legal opinion right now, but we can provide you with, uh, it's a, a, a trove of documents. Like I say, going back to the late 1970, I think it was 1977, if I recall. Well, there was reference to letters in January to the board, and I don't those, believe I got those, those. Those relate to the sort of written version of the comments we heard tonight. Those relate to people uh, being frustrated with the situation not being addressed properly, and rightly so. And so we're we're taking action to try and do that. But long story short, we can discuss this offline. But I'm not sure that there's a need for legal um, expertise right now, but you're welcome to review the documents and you may, I may be wrong about that, so. Well, I just wanna help these people any way I can. So if, if I can be of service to you and, and to Eric, I'm happy to volunteer some time. All right, thank you, Paul. Marion. All right, um, I, I want to address not so much the engineering issue of the water on Farm Road because I, also, like Paul, I'm not up to date on that. Um, I, I'd like the people who spoke tonight to understand that the select board doesn't meet outside of public meeting as, as a board. Uh, and we cannot have more than two people talk about things outside of public meeting at a time. So that would explain why some of us are in on the engineering problem and some of us are not. It's just the way things work on the public meeting law forces that sort of situation. But I have to say that uh, there's no reason that we couldn't get that information through other means. And I totally agree with some of the speakers tonight. Probably all of you feel that the boards don't communicate as much with each other as they should. And I think all of us agree on that. You know, we absolutely are on your side on that. Um, of course, we're all volunteers and we don't have unlimited time and it's hard to track people down. We have these meeting schedules. We have a lot of excuses, but we could do better. There's no question. And um, regarding the, uh, some of the comments referred to, um, especially from Brian and, uh, and I think um, maybe Art, referred to uh, the negative impact of, of the development on the current water situation today. And that certainly makes the development relevant. And as you, uh, Brian and <clears throat> Arthur know, I met with you and listened to your concerns and many of us did. Um, months and a couple, maybe a year and a half ago now. And your concerns were very clearly incorporated into the letter that we wrote to the state concerning the 40B development. We had that opportunity to make those points and, and we did as strongly as we could. The, um, the housing authority, the state came, came back and said, um, this still will have to go through the comprehensive permit process. And when it does do that, we'll have a lot more hearings and a lot more uh, opportunity to speak. It's not a done deal. But I do want to clarify one thing just for me, Brian, perhaps you would know. Um, the work that has been done on Farm Road, uh, we know that that is not the 40B development. Those are the, the a and lots that the developer carved off of that property. So are you saying that the I, I don't, a &R, I don't think that, That's not a true statement, Marion. Uh, what's, what's not true about it? 
they're, they're, I think they're, uh, Brian knows more, I suspect, but I believe that they're doing testing on the um, 40B lots now. Just I wasn't referring to the testing. I was referring to the construction that I understand from Brian oh. has affected the, uh, the water situation. Maybe Brian could correct me on that. So um, I'll just, is that okay, Jeff, if I speak now? I'm sorry, I don't want to go out of turn. Yeah, it is out of turn, but why don't you uh, answer her well, question? Let's just get it clarified. Yeah. So the, the as you all are aware, he's filed multiple ANR plans and uh, filed plans for three single family residences. At this point in time, that went hand in hand with the Conservation Commission's approval of three wells that were, con the approval was conditioned on those three wells being for single family residential homes. Then right. he spun off the ANRs and he built one and tried to start on two other ones. It was during that process that we identified this open drain and sent to multiple boards videos and photographs of that drain flowing water. And this is when our concern started because I'm not allowed to turn off water flowing onto my land. I don't know what gives this individual the right to tell the town to take its water elsewhere. Yeah, we, we, we get that, Brian. I just wanted to clarify that, that the work that has been done is not part of the 40B development. That has not yet been approved by the town. It, it, it doesn't That matter. was approved as an individual home, you're correct. That's right, yeah. So in any case, for, for that reason, um, the individual home um, buildings and developments I, I don't come before all the boards. So, I mean, we, we really do need to, I like the uh, proposal that a subgroup of this board uh, delve into this further. And I think the group that's delving into it is perfect. And uh, our new town administrator is a civil engineer and DPW, ex-DBW director, and we have um, others that are well able to address this, so. Okay. I just wanted to add that. Okay, good. So I'm gonna go with uh, Sarah Teal. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. You, you've had your hand Hi, up for everyone. a while. Yeah, I'm good at being patient. Uh, I live at 64 Farm Road and I have done with my family for 10 years. Um, I'm a reasonably well-educated person and we have raised our children in this community. I think over the past 10 years, what I have noticed is the field across the street consistently floods to the tree that you'll see in the middle of the field where it's approximately where the water is right now. So in my mind, especially as a gardener who was quite worried about the water levels in the past, this is a normal year of water and nothing uh, unusual. In terms of the flooding on Farm Road, that began long before the foundation drain from our house was closed. And I would argue it began at the same time as the development or the foundation that was built. And I have never seen running water nor ice on Farm Road in the 10 years that I've been here like that until this past season. I would also argue that the foundation drain um, discussions about illicit drainage aside, which I realize need to be addressed. Water needs to come down this hill and get to the north side of Farm Road. It can come through our basement or it can go around our basement, but water is still going to come down the hill. And so I think the issue really is about how we're gonna manage that. And I would also say that the foundation towards Marion's point is in a place where there used to be wetlands as well as trees. And I think that's a substantially different circumstance now. And it doesn't surprise me at all that we're having trouble this year. Thank you. Thank you. Did you finish, Brian, or did you have some more to add? I'm sorry, I did, I did have one comment and I'll be very brief and to the point, Jeff. Uh, Paul Durensis asked, you know, what could we do as a board? And I really, really spoke very clearly about what we as the residents of this neighborhood would like. We're not asking you to to do something unprecedented. What we're trying to do is to get you to suggest that the Conservation Commission reconsider their previous actions in these matters because things have changed. They are allowed to do it under the law and they should consider doing it. 
And at the last meeting, which I was heard at like 1130 at night and couldn't even spell my own name, our concerns were essentially written off with, without, without much consideration. And so we would ask that as, as select board members or as a board as a whole, maybe you make a motion to ask you can only ask the Board of Health, you can't direct them, but there's nothing wrong with asking them to reconsider going out and finding out where the water is on that lot because they've essentially built a huge earthen dam that has changed everything as we can see from the flooding on Farm Road. Thank you for my comments. Thank you. And uh, Paul, did you wanna add something? I, I usually uh, defer to select board members first, but we have more public comment too. Well, I wanted to make two points. One, uh, I would ask some of these residents to copy me and some of their correspondence so I can read for myself some of the stuff that's been going on or is going to go on in the future. Uh, and secondly, I have no problem with asking the Board of Health and the Conservation Commission to take a second look at this. Uh, why not? Why? What's this? I don't see any downside to asking them to look at it. Is I there think a they've taken a pretty, I think you can listen to the hearings. I've attended both meetings that they've taken a look at it, I think. So, the, the, you know, many of these residents don't agree with, uh, I think, their direction, but I'm not sure it's the select board's job to tell the Board of Health or the uh, CONCOM what to do. We can ask them certainly ask them to take another look at it. But I think my sense is that they feel that they address the concerns to, to uh, you know, the, the Board of Health mainly enforces the regulations on wells and septic systems and CONCOM basically just administers the Wetlands Protection Act. So they're regulatory bodies that are not responding to uh, creative ideas, they're just comparing a proposal before them to those regulations that they enforce. So if it's not in their regulations, it's not always easy to, uh, to have other input on it is my sense. But we, you're welcome to talk to uh, both of them if well, you want the to. The request was to, that somebody make a motion to have the select board ask that these two boards to take a second look at the I don't. I don't think a motion is necessary. We can all. We can talk to there. Are, there are other. It turns out there are other residents in towns just like we are. I. I don't think there's any need to take a motion. We can talk to them and say, are there is there uh, issues that you feel need to be reconsidered on on. Uh, I, I don't think we need to reconsider anything on the development because we're going to be doing that anyway as part of the comprehensive permit process. The ZBA is going to ask every one of these boards to do now a very rigorous review of the uh, 40B development. So they're, they're already going to be re-evaluating that. As far as the flooding, I actually think we're better off with this small team of people who have significant expertise in this area, and I think they'll get to the root cause of the flooding. I just don't want to see anybody hurt. I was quite moved by the well, no, I, I think we're, we don't need a motion on that either. I think we all agree <laughs> on that also. But I, I, I really do think we're taking action here. Um, and, and it may not, it may, I, I can sense the frustration and concern as well as everyone can, but I think we are moving in the right direction to address the flooding issue, which seems to me to be the most urgent need, both in terms of property damage but even more significantly in terms of potential injury or other uh, consequences if we don't address the flooding situation. So I, we have three top people in town working on it and have they've already walked the site twice, I believe. So I'm, I'm pretty confident with what we're doing. Okay. I'm, I'm open to uh, people, you know, if you want to reach out to uh, us with specific things you think we could do better in terms of the investigation, we're certainly not eyes and ears uh, closed. We're willing to listen to what people have to say, but they are working on it and, and have walked the site and have done some things. So let me go through, uh, Marion, uh, do you have another comment you want to make? I do, yeah. Um, just to follow on to what you said, Jeff, 
Uh, given that this sub team, which looks like the perfect bunch of people to do this, are going out and gathering information, I think it is appropriate for uh, the sub team or the sub team or select board plus admin town administrator, whoever, uh, take that those facts back to the board of health and or concom. Uh, so that we all know that we're working with the same set of facts, because I'm not sure that that's the case right now. And uh, it's true that uh, this particular problem is not going to be, the, the comprehensive permit process is too late for this because it hasn't even started yet. And the problem is really, uh, it, the, the immediate problem is related to the building that's going on now, which is not part of the 40B. Uh, I'm not sure that's true, Marian. We, we need to find out what the source of flooding is, but I don't believe it's related to any of the projects. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I I'm, we told my judgment until I have the facts. Yeah, I understood, understood. So now I don't think I have any more select board hands up. I think Rob, you're the next one to have a hand up, I believe. Well, thanks, Jeff. I do appreciate the select board's interest in the flooding problem. Um, I do respectfully disagree with some of the testimony about, you know, from experts that have showed up once or twice to look at it. You know, I've lived here for 13 years, and I think Sarah said it well. The issue is not the foundation at 64. This water is going to come out of the hill whether anyone lives there or not, and it has to go across the street. The problem is that someone plugged it on the 55 Farm Road side, whether it was the developer or someone at the behest of the developer, I don't know who, but the, someone plugged it on that side in order, to, in order to get the hydrology to look better at that development and they're that's causing not, water that, to- That's not true, Rob. You don't know the facts, so don't make statements that you don't have the basis to make. I do. I look at that drain every day, and it is never backed. Up. It hasn't backed up to so the. So we, you just heard that we had we had an engineering side. firm tell us that it was uh, the best choice for the town to to close that drain. That's what we. And hired then it an floods the whole expert. road and puts up causes car accidents. You have we, to let the water go under the road, we, and we're all bowing to one guy's desire to get his well to pass that, no, for construction, and it's just not fair to everyone else. Well, you say your facts are wrong. This is what a few other people have read. Your facts are flat out wrong. Okay, so we didn't. The developer didn't have anything to do with closing that drain, and other people have said that too. That was a town decision based on an engineering report in conjunction with town council. So, I would appreciate if you refrain from making strong statements if you don't have substantiation for them. I'm Thank not you blaming the developer. I'm saying someone plugged it on the other side of the road and it's causing did. a lot they of trouble. They did, based on an engineering, as, engineering assessment that was provided to the town. That's a true statement. So I'm gonna to go to the next person. Uh, is that Steven, is that you? No, it's Courtney. Courtney. Oh, all right, well, you, you confused me. Yeah, it's a trick. Uh, yes, Courtney Eck, co-chair of the Conservation Commission. I am happy to work with anyone and explain the details of the decisions that are made. And I was also at that meeting that we discussed this at 11 p.m. with Brian, and I could also barely spell my name, but I think we did spend a lot of time answering questions and going over the limits of what our jurisdiction is and you know, there are regulatory definitions for um, areas that we can regulate and just not every, not every flooded area or, you know, water on the side of the road is a, is a jurisdictional area. Um, you know, and I, I think we took a very hard look at it and there's really, there's really nothing, there's nothing more we can do with this right now. Um, and Certainly, when the ZBA has their um, has their hearing, we will have lots of input on in terms of the um, local bylaw um, because they're the ones responsible for determining which of our local regulations um, are going to get waived. Um, so, if anybody has any questions, um, 
feel free to reach out. Apparently I am a environmental zealot, but I'm not zealous enough for some people. And George is gonna roll his eyes. Why don't you join the conservation commission, George? I would be happy to, Courtney. Uh, <laughs> Court, well, I, I don't know. It's funny that Courtney makes comments of, after what she did at our public hearing, calling people uh, names in the in the chat. So I would I would caution yeah. on her. Let's not let's not let's not go there, George. George. I appreciate it. It's let's just not go there. It, it's disgusting. Yeah, so let's not go there. So Karen, uh, I think you're the next hand. I'm losing track here. <laughs> um, thank you all. Yes, I just have a few um, additional comments. So I know just to hopefully these are in order. Eric Johnson, he talks about, um, you know, what Neil stated, you know, getting all that letters to him. We just want to say like, we, I've written to Diane Moore as I've written to others. I too don't get a response back. So I would like a plan, I, at the end of this meeting, I will stay on. Um, I wanna know what the plan of action is, what the next steps are, and um, when you will take our comments and when we can expect a response, because this ZBA meeting is, if I understand correctly, within the next two months, and time is not on our side. And that is what I think, you know, um, what works in favor for what's going on here is that because of these delays, the meetings, we're not getting on agendas, we're not being heard, we're not being responded to, that, um, that this is what the developer counts on so that we can't get our ducks in a row to, um, to properly get this addressed by the town. Um, your comments, Jeff, about, um, you know, about the engineer and the plugging of the drain on 64 Farm Road. I, I would like, I actually would like to have a motion. I want it formally written in your minutes that a neutral third party does take a look at that because I think there's other things going on in this town where um, it is not, you know, people, because of the longstanding, the history of what's going in this town, it is not, it, these are not fair assessments. So if we have a neutral third party come in to assess the situation, I think that could benefit all of us. So we understand that it is a fair decision of what's being addressed and the problems. Also, you talk about can this I, engineer. Can I, clar can, I, can I clarify that question? Are you referring to the development or the flooding? The flooding. You're okay. talking we, about that dream. We, had, you we, said had an, we had an independent third party do the assessment. Okay, is that posted on the um, on the town website so the I, residents can take a I'm, look at that? I'm not sure if it is, but we could cause it to be. Okay, then we would like that. We would like to review it, that, please. I can find out. Do you know, Jeremy, is it already on the website? Uh, no, it's currently not, but we could okay. make that information available. They're a neutral you, third party engineer that we okay. brought in Great. for that very reason. Great, then we would love all the residents. I would think, I'd imagine the residents at 64 Farm Road and the rest of us that are have concerns would like Absolutely. to review that. All right, um, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I wanted to be able to answer one so we could okay. check one Okay, fair off. enough. Ahead, Thank you ahead. very much. I, I know I can't, I'm a full-time yes. single parent, so I just, it's fine. you know, you're, you're good. I'm tr I can only attend when I can. And the yep. engineering assessment that you refer to as well, um, about the plugging of that, uh, is this the same thing where same you- thing. Yes, it's okay. I would like. Com. They're one of the top engineering okay. firms in the world. They're based in Los Angeles. Great. So can you um Jeremy post, will take is care that of it. is that Jeremy, posted on the website as well? It it, it isn't it's it's one document, it'll be posted. Great. And Jeremy, it's, can it, we say that you'll post it within the next 24 hours or within the week? We would like to review this. It'll be it will make it available as soon as we can. Yes. So can you give me a can you give me a timeline of what as soon as we can? Because time is not of the essence here. With, I, within I a week, we'll yes. Commit by mon by Thank Monday. You. We'll do it Great. by Monday more. Actually, is Monday a holiday? No, it's not. It's Easter. Okay, go ahead. What was your um, next one, Karen? And that, and then I just want to state too that um, I've been a resident for 14 years here too. So I've, I do feel like I have a clear assessment of the flow that comes down the road. And I know this is not about the developer, but I do want to state this for the record, since this is being recorded, that there is concerns too of fear intimidation and you know everything that we state it it does harm us you know we are putting our own personal lives at risk here when we talk about these concerns in a public forum because of other things that have happened to us um, when we have 
And I just want that to also be stated to the select board that that is a concern, but this is how important it is to us as residents here on Farm Road and in this neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, no, we certainly sympathize. Uh, I think Adam was next, Vivek, and then you, and I think Neil still has a comment. Go ahead, Adam. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Jeff, you mentioned, um, I, I don't wanna restate what you said, but it sounded like you were saying you knew for a fact that what was happening with the flooding was not a result of development. I didn't, I didn't and I, say that. I, I, I firmly believe they're not related. I firmly believe that the development activity or the testing are not related to flooding, but I'm not an expert. So we'll, well allow that's, the so that's what I was going to ask. Like, how you, like, why are you so confident? I, I just that? think the flooding, some of those drains, the flooding has been going on for 30 years. So my opinion though, is subject to the team that is an expert in this area that I asked to look into it. So I mean, the reason I raise it is because if, I don't want to get the you're during it. confused is my point though, Adam. I don't think they, they're related. So I think that we need to look at it. And if we find they're related, we will. But I think it lean, I'm leaning to it right now. They're not related. It would seem that we'd want to know if they're related on a factual we're, we're, basis. And if we, but, right, but it, to the point of it being time is a, of the essence, if they are related, uh -huh. wouldn't that be something that would need to be investigated ahead of the the application going to the zba like it, you guys keep talking about what waiting till the zba is reviewing the application why wouldn't if, that, if that's, that's based on data the like the flooding they've but, been out to the site two or three times on the flooding already to walk walk the site we've had the engineer we're reviewing all the 30 years of history we've downloaded the files to uh, the team that's working on it they're doing that they're not the, the investigation of the flooding is not being driven by the 40B process. They're working right steadily have for the last two weeks on that. Yeah. I guess my point is, if you don't know that they're not related, well, we'll find it would out. seem that you would want to know as soon as humanly possible. Well, that, if there's, if that's going to, if they're it's going to affect. They're, work, the, they're working on it, Adam. They're working. Yeah, but it sounded like you had already come to the conclusion that it's not related, and that doesn't seem I, legitimate. I, I I am not an expert in the area, but I would be surprised if they're related. Do you have another question? I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Vivek, I think you're next. Uh, you're muted, though. You got to unmute yourself first. No. Okay. Uh, hey, there you go. Sorry about that. Uh, just a quick question. Um, when were these engineering uh, estimates done? Do you know, I was just curious as the timing, uh, because I, I know there were some dates that were given in, in the last two years where we've had historic droughts. And as Sarah said, this is not actually, doesn't seem to be um, an unusually wet amount of precipitation that we've gotten now. So uh, my curiosity is just as, as the, the subcommittee investigates, it's just taking into account if some of this stuff needs to be re-examined uh, uh, in light of the fact that the last two years, um, the water flow and the hydrology may not be representative of, yeah, sort think, of the history. I haven't studied the report, but I, this is a well-known international firm, so I'm pretty sure they would look at- I agree, at, that's why I, I don't look pretend at, to know, but I would feel well, better if I said it. They yeah. would. As 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 we just pointed out, we'll make the report available. But they 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 would take into account a long period of uh, uh, hydrology and other data. I, I believe absolutely. And not to belabor the point, but I would also like to say I've only been here since 2015. But no matter how wet it gets, half of Great Rock's road runoff runs into the drains at the bay at the intersection of Great Rock and Farm Road, and we've yes. never had water pool there. So right. even though that area does uh, receive a, quite a bit of water. We've ne we've never had ice uh, uh, sort of make that entire area treacherous. It's never flooded before. Mm -hmm. So the nature of the flooding has to have changed recently, which requires some re-examination. And I mean, it's it's I understand correlation is not causation, but mm -hmm. at some point, it's hard to ignore the fact that within weeks of all this happening, 
we've got a car and a tree, you know? So I, I would just, again, for my own uh, sort of satisfaction, I, I just want to make those points known. Thanks. All right. No, we appreciate it. Thank you. Josh? Yeah, Jeff, I'm, I'm sorry to, to chime in again. I just I no, have to fine. reiterate what Vivek says, and, and we don't know each other very well, but I but this is just incredibly logical and makes a lot of sense. And Dr. Nutra, I don't I don't think we met before either, but with with all due respect, I saw you shaking your head and and I've got to just chime in that I we we've lived here for almost eleven years. I'm we our, our bedroom window, our kitchen window where we spend ninety percent of our lives looks out on the farm road, we see it every single day. Like this is a new problem. And 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 I I I I am not a scientist in I'm not a water, I don't have any expert in this area. But the reality is like I have some common sense and this is totally new. When the when the drain across the street was plugged, this completely changed. When the trees were taken down across the street, this changed. When that when that monstrosity of a whatever it is, uh, the, the, I don't know, I'm sorry, the foundation of that house was put in by the developer. This completely changed, totally changed. And we watch it from our front window every single day. I don't know how to make that more clear. I don't have the science to back it up, but I can tell you what I observe. I can tell you what I take pictures of every day. I can tell you what my kids see when they walk across the street to go, you know, to do their thing. I, it, it's, it's totally different. And it is this, substantively completely changed the landscape of farm road over the last two years since the developer this developer has come in I, I i don't know what to say beyond that this water has to go somewhere it, it it now goes onto farm road when you plug the drain not you personally i don't mean to imply that but when the drain was plugged across the street or next to my house it went made a like a, a stop in my basement and then went to farm road you unplugged it now my basement's dry but it still goes to farm road so the only thing that's changed is 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 the, the the trees coming down the foundation being put in and the change in the in the landscape across the street i've witnessed it firsthand my wife's witnessed it firsthand my kids have witnessed it firsthand and i just worry about the safety of our our children driving because we have teenage drivers and our and of course our water supply so Jeff, I appreciate your time, and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I will, I will stop there. Thank you. No, no, we want to hear everyone's input. That's why we. Uh, Jeff, you, you just froze. Data that they have this, maybe it hasn't all been assembled yet, but the data that's been assembled, we can share. Yeah, um, I, Jeff. Yeah, Marion. I just, I just want to respond to the last couple of comments. Um, I, I don't know if I was shaking my head or what I was shaking it at, but please don't read stuff into my, my head that I, I don't intend. But uh, I have to say that what I really think is that we do need a fresh look at this uh, by people who know what they're doing. And it looks like we're going to, we're going to get that. Um, I agree that the AECOM is it's a great um, firm, but it was during a very dry period and what's happening is happening. And um, the 40B is sort of a moot point at this point because it hasn't happened yet. No comprehensive permit yet, but uh, the construction that's been happening has seems to have changed things. I, I believe the neighbors that are seeing what they see and um, we need a fresh look and uh, I'm not passing judgment until I have a lot of new facts and I don't have the, all the facts yet. So my mind is open, okay. just so you know. No, that's good, that's good. You're a researcher, I know you like facts. Uh, Paul. Hi, I just wanna make a request that I get copies on things first from the citizens on, on Farm Road that they, they send letters to the town, send a copy to me directly. So but I'm also from pressing that from, to Jeremy and Diane that will do that. Right. And and but for you and, and Eric and the team, to the extent that you get reports like this aircom report and stuff like that, I would request that you share that with the whole board. And uh, I understand it's now going to go on the website and I can find it there. But as we go forward, it would be nice just to copy me on this so I can see what's going on and know what's going on. 
I, I'd like to, I feel an obligation to try and help these people. And I, I don't know enough to know how to do that. But if I have more information and have a chance to learn more about this, I'll do my best to try and we'll, find a way. We'll, we, I promise you, we'll fill your inbox, Paul. I promise you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay. Now, uh, Neil, I told you in the chat if you want to talk, do you still, do you still have something you want to say? I do, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. number one, I've lived here for 25 years as well, and this is a new problem, right? I've heard a few times people saying this is the way it was. That is not the case. Number two, what I would suggest to you is clearly the accident occurred on January 27th. What you've heard tonight is a bunch of frustration from the residents. And what I would suggest is there is a working group that would be great to ensure communication with the neighbors on Great Rock and Farm Road, the concerned citizens. And I think that would go a long way because right now there's a feeling that there's a problem and there hasn't been a lot done. Last point becomes, Eric, if there's anything, and I think the world of you, if there's anything you think was not factual, I have probably about 200 pages of emails and records from phone calls with neighbors. I'd ha be happy to address any issue you think that or, that or item that you think was misstated. Thank you. I guess what I would say is I always go for where I'm at. So I, I, I'm not, I, everyone's also just upset, understandably so. So I think the best solution is what we're doing and they've been actively working on this for some time. So I think that they share things but they probably will share them once they're at a stage that they're uh, assembled and maybe edited and ready for sharing. So I think we've got, a, a, you know, like I said, we got the chief engineer from the town of Framingham, the former DPW director of Natick and our own DPW director. And we've been, been advising by this AECOM, which is an independent engineering resource and with our in concurrence with our town council. So um, I can, uh, I guess, say that I can understand the frustration that we're not communicating yet, but I, I think that they're trying to have something to communicate. So I, the frustration and the concern about the safety is very valid. Uh, we did unplug the drain outside of 64 Farm Road uh, within 24 hours of it happening. So I, I, I was on, or maybe it was 48 hours, but I was unaware of that, but we rectified that right away. So um, we, are, we are aware and we're taking action, but we're probably not communicating as well as we could, I guess I would say. So Arthur, I think you. I think you get the last word. How does that sound to you? Well, I don't know. Um, so <laughs> I, I just wanted to. I mean, it, it. It seems like there were three asks amongst the residents, and I think there were a lot of good points. And I, I can't uh, speak as well and as fluently as like Brian and Neil did. Um, and one of them, it, it seems like the, the the board is already on top of, and that's fixing the the problem with the the flooding on Farm Road. Um, it was my understanding, and I and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, it was my understanding that there was a a letter from council from the developer to the town, which was the genesis for getting the drain at 55 Farm Road plugged. And so I think that's the connection that people are making between the development and the flooding on Farm Road. And that, uh, you know, obviously that had been allowed to drain there for some period of time, 30, 40, whatever years it's been. But that was, that's the change in circumstances. And so that's, that's how that ties into the development. That's in my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then the other two I asks- I don't know whether you're right or wrong. I can't comment, I don't know. So, and, and the other two asks are um, just to reiterate what Brian said, and I and I'd like I know Paul wanted to make a motion, which which I appreciate, and I and I support that as a resident, but I also obviously don't have that authority on the board of selectmen. Um, but what Brian asked is if if the select board could reach out to the board of health. I understand they're they they coexist. The board of health doesn't report to the select board, um, but just to to see if they can look at this issue again. I think things have changed. And it's not merely for them to reconsider something they've already considered. It's to consider new information uh, and, and uh, arguments that Brian has has presented, I think, eloquently. And if maybe they could hear from Brian again, he's, he's going to be able to speak to this much better than I can. And the same thing with the Conservation Commission. The landscape has changed, literally, and also in terms of what is within their purview. And I do believe that the Conservation Commission does report to the select board. And so that would be something the select board could encourage them uh, strongly to take a look at the new information that that Brian's brought to light. Thank you. I think they're aware of the information you just heard from Courtney Eck, who's the chair of a uh, vice chair of Conservation Commission five minutes ago. So uh, they don't report to us. We appoint 
the members of the Conservation Commission and the Board of Health are elected, just to correct that. So I, I, think, I think we've reached an agreement. I know it was difficult, but I, I think it was uh, helpful for the select board members to better understand. And I think um, there's things we could certainly do better, including posting some of the documentation and communicating better. Uh, and I think that um, we were very sensitive to this and, and maybe hadn't paid close enough attention. So I take uh, responsibility for that. And that's why I created some of these teams. But, uh, maybe I should have done it sooner. So uh, I take some of the blame for it as well. So I think we've pretty much covered the discussion tonight. I don't think there's any need for any motions. I think we need to do it to Marion's uh, uh, a point, we need to gather some of the facts, which we're in the process of doing. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see where we are on that. So unless someone else has any other point they wanna make, I think we've had a great discussion and I appreciate your attendance and your um, uh, understanding and your educating us. All right, thank you. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Thank you very much for all Thanks, your Brian. volunteerism. Thanks, thanks for bringing the Thank team you. together. Have a good night. All right, Thank you too. We want to get you to 11 o'clock. So <laughs> if Concom can do it, why can't we do it? Been there, done that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, our next topic is the annual town meeting. And the primary uh, uh, subtopic is just deciding what we want to do in the quorum. Now, I don't know if you saw the note. We got a note today that, um, thank you, Arthur. We got a note uh, um, from Jackie. It turns out, you know, our typical quorum is 100, as you know, and I think we lowered it to uh, 20, I believe it was, uh, for the COVID years. And Mary's here can correct everything I misstate. But um, I believe at, at the 2022 town meeting, we actually got down to 74 people for some of the later. The concern was not only how many, if you have 100 people at you know, the kickoff, what, how many you have for the later articles on the warrant. And so we got down to around 74 people in 2022 at the end of the warrant. Now we had lowered the quorum to 20 then, so we were fine, but um, I believe what we're being recommended to is to consider what we should set the quorum for the 2023 uh, annual meeting. So uh, Mary, do you wanna key it off better than I did? I couldn't possibly do it better, Jeff. Couldn't possibly. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, we. I. I am very much in favor of lowering the quorum for for a couple of reasons. Um, the beginning of the meeting and the end of the meeting. We. I can't start the meeting until we get a quorum. Um, that's particularly important this year because um, if we have to go to a second night, which would be pretty. Uh, no one wants that, I would say. And but this year it would have the additional problem of having to move the venue from the auditorium to the gymnasium. There is also a question of using the clickers again on a second night. So you know there are we want to finish in one night. So the earlier we can start, the better. And um, you know we have some consequential articles, and you know it. If, if it runs late, we can end up with a quorum well below 100. So that's my feeling. J Jackie's on here too. Do the two of you want to recommend a quorum? Do you have a, a number that you think would be appropriate? Well, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it can go as low as you think is acceptable because, you know, we've done it with 20. Yeah. That's fine. You know, if you feel more comfortable with something a little bit higher, that's fine as well. Um, but I, I don't want to go too high. I wouldn't want to go over 50. Yeah, I was thinking because the thing I always worry about is have a town meeting and 20 people decide what 4,200 yeah. people are going to buy, you know? Absolutely. I, I mean, well, la I mean, we have that last year. We had 100 people. Yeah. You know, yeah. or below, I'm sorry, fewer than 100 people deciding at the end. Yeah, so, yeah, at, at the end. So uh, yeah. I, I'm going to get select board input in a minute, but I wanted to see if Jackie had anything she wanted to add. No, I would, I, I would 
I agree with Mary. I would like to see you lower the quorum, but it ultimately is up to the board and Mary's decision. But I am concerned about finishing in one night. Um, as Mary said, we can't start the meeting until the quorum has arrived. And, um, you know, I'm worried about people leaving. But hopefully, manage, Mary's going to mar hopefully manage some of the articles so that um, people stick around for the you know controversial ones. But yeah, yeah, I would like to see the quorum lowered. And I know Eric had mentioned last year possibly um, lowering the quorum um, permanently, but that would take a bylaw um, change. That if you guys wanted to do that, that could be discussed for next year's town meeting. Yeah, I'd like to make comment that, but George has his hand raised first. Well, I want to ask Jackie a clarifying question, and George is next. At one point, I think Eric also suggested that maybe, maybe we start a half hour earlier on the first night. Is that is that in your plan or not? I forget. Am I right about that? No. Well, the, no? the warrant also okay. states that town meeting starts at 7 o'clock, so we okay. can't change it at that, this point. All right, and a lot fine. of people, you know, one of the reasons that we're worried about the quorum is because a lot of people are working and commuting, uh, commuting again. Yeah, I understand. Commuting again and can't, you know, can't, can't, can't come or can't yep. get there right at 10 of seven. Yep. Yep. George? Yeah, I would uh, make a motion to lower the quorum to 50. I think I would hate, I don't, I, I kind of struggle with this because I don't want it too low that I know like, when we were at the advisory hearing, we were talking about how 96% of the people voted for this, but it was only a hundred people that voted. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, so I know. 96 people voted for it out of the 4,200 in town, but it's um, so, so I think I would like to make a motion that we lower the quorum to 50, just so we can make sure we can get it done. Okay, Eric, you said you had a comment to make? I just said, Honestly, I'm less concerned about, you know, it was extended this one year um, due to concerns. People who are still worried about going in groups and stuff like that. I am less concerned about the pandemic, to be honest with you. Um, I think at this point, if some people have concerns, I don't want to squelch those concerns. But I think it does stem to like, if we lower it this year, lower it permanently. I know it has to be a bylaw and so on, but let's do it at the next town meeting. There's some town, and I've heard this story, it might be urban legend, but I've heard this story a couple of times, who couldn't fill the quorum of 100 so they made the quorum five and then they got over 100 every single time because no one wanted five people to control the destiny of the town <laughs> yeah i know but and i i still think it should be like 20 or something like that because you know, know. what those are the dedicated people and i'm not trying to be so you know passive on this thing like but you know what if 20 people decide the future of town that's the fault of the other 40 195 people or whatever the yeah, math yeah is. well some <laughs> of them are some of them are voters i'm exaggerating but yeah we have 3,100 voters. Yeah. There you go. That's go a ahead, fault Mary. of the 3,180. 3,000 who don't show up. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Mary. I'm, I was just going to say, if, if the board um, decides that they are interested in looking at lowering the quorum permanently, I have a, a, an excellent resource for them because I through mass moderators, um, I have a spreadsheet of what most of the towns in Massachusetts have for their quorum based on their population size. So that that information, you know, comp information can be available, but it's not for this year. Yeah. Okay. So we have a, we do have a motion from George to second for his motion. I'll second it. OK. I, I and Paul, wanna, you have a comment before we vote? Yes, I want to see if I can persuade George to drop that to a lower number, I think. All the arguments that have been presented suggest that why run the risk with 50? I'm thinking particularly. I, I, I think 20 is a risk that we have 20 people deciding what's wrong, what's going on with the town. That's why but, I said 50. Well, I doubt I, we'll go, if we didn't go below 50 in 2020, I doubt we'll ever go before 50. Didn't we add this up between select board and advisory and the town moderator and a few? Like um, a staff people who live yeah, in town? We're over 20 or something with, like that. Yeah, we're we automatically have that. Yeah, I don't think we should be making decisions as a town with less than 50 people. I know I worry about that. Because I mean, to be the, blunt, the, I mean, you, let's talk about the, the democratic process of voting on things. If we don't have 50 people, we shouldn't be making big decisions. And I think we'll get 30 in addition to the people who are obligated to be there anyway. So I, let's just vote, Paul. I take your point, but let's vote on We have a motion in a second. So why don't we vote? And if we don't have a a strong enough vote, we can re, re, make a new motion. 
So um, we have a motion of uh, George for 50, seconded by Eric. Uh, Marion? I'll vote aye for 50. Okay, George? Aye. Eric? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I am I as well. So 50 it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. You know the only closing comment I want to make, and as I should have made it earlier per se, is is about that about kind of like civic engagement, and it's a handful of people that really you know really do drive the town, and I they think we have a lot of appreciation from them. I hope that that excitement we saw with the last um, agenda item does get people kind of excited to look beyond their immediate situation and actually be engaged. I mean, I made a comment, maybe it was a little bit too flippant of a comment. I mean, if not part of the solution, part of the problem. But, you know, to some degree, I, whenever these things happen, and we see this every now and then, a few times a year, something big comes up and gets a, a wave of people engaged. I hope when it's all done, one or two of them each time just becomes more, again, wanting to be part of the solution and actually volunteers and, you know, um, does stuff. Because there's a lot of room, there's a lot of capacity, I think, for people to, uh, to give help. And yeah. that, that's right to this town meeting thing we're talking about here, even just showing up to town meeting and voting on some administrative bylaw to change the regulation, you know, um, in numbering or something like that. It doesn't seem like much, but it really is something and it's yeah. important. Uh, there's something I 100% agree with you, Eric. It, I think it's, uh, that's kind of the point of my comment earlier, despite somebody focusing on one little word I said, um, was more civic engagement. Let's get people to run for these offices. We went to caucus and had what, one contested race? Like, yep. let's get, People, yeah, we had people to, want to get involved. involved. Let's get involved. The, the ones that weren't contested, we had a tough time even getting enough people to run to fill the spots also. Yeah. Jackie's got her hand up, Jeff. Yeah, I see. You're muted though, Jackie. Sorry. Um, it wasn't contested at, at caucus. I had somebody come in to, that ended up filling out nomination papers after okay. caucus. So we had to, caucus, caucus was contested. Yes, sorry. it was. I think the Board of Health was. We had no we? library oh, trustee. Yeah, library sorry, library trustee. trustee. Library trustee. The most, the most unexpected yeah. contested race at caucus ever. <laughs> so, but but, but it's not contested on the ballot. Yeah. Okay. I think George is referring to caucus. I'm just but talking about like, the caucus. yeah, getting more yeah, involved. Nice no, I no, I, I agree yeah. with George on that. He's right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I think the take home message is that uh, every year we should have at least one hot agenda item, one hot article, and it should be placed at the end of the town. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Not that's at a, the beginning. That's going to no. guarantee people want to run for select board, I'm sure, Mary. <laughs> Go ahead, Jackie, do you have something yeah, else? Yeah, no, that is something that I that we definitely need to do going forward that I would like the board to consider is the way the articles are listed on the warrant because- I was serious. Yeah. I'm absolutely serious about this because we have, it, with the example that I had when we had the 525 people for the Pine Hill Road and the turf field. Yes that was like article nine or something and then everyone left i know i know well not right after they voted the coa down before they, they voted left, a couple yes. things but still <laughs> even so as the night wore on we ended up with from 525 down to yeah. like 125 people we, we so, did that's true yeah so we I, I i would like the board to consider future the way the warren articles are listed i think that's re that's really important we need to keep people engage and keep them at town meeting the people that come yeah jackie there's actually an there's a you know in addition to the order that is listed in the warrant there are some communities actually have sort of the they once they go through their financial articles the ones that they really need to get to you know first night they'll they'll have a lottery um so that the moderator actually kind of draws from a from a hat what what's the next article that comes up that kind of keeps people's attention <laughs> So I I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Even even that turf article back then, there was still, uh, I think, a large text message things where people were texting each other to show up now, and yeah. then they kind of. It's a, and I get it; they have limited time. It was uh, a Saturday, and a lot of people had their kids sports. at sports. Like sports. <laughs> they did have sports. They did. When you have kids, and you... that was a sports article, so that we're going yeah. to people. That... So uh, hey, I think we've covered that. Does anyone have any select board reports? I have I have one. We got a letter from uh, 
how do you say her last name? Sarah Reggie, I think you say exactly. It? Yep, that's how you say it. She's um concerned about the bike park. Uh they they uh uh um forest and trails is a either considering or approved a bike uh trek or park. Um we, we won't discuss it tonight, but I just want to get a sense of the select board. Would you like to have it on the agenda two weeks from now to discuss it? I don't know that we have the authority. There's some delegation of authorities issues there. They maintain and sort of operate the forest and trails, but I don't know that they can make. There's probably a delegation of authority that's not well defined on what they have the authority to do, I guess I would say. I would be happy to discuss it. I think it's a, I think a diversity of use of our forests is a great topic for our town. And I think we really, we, we should discuss it because there's, we have 50% open space in this town. There's plenty of hiking trails. There's should be plenty of room to also do a bike skills uh, uh, park. So I think we should definitely have a discussion if, if I yeah, would, love, so to I, I didn't want to I would love to show my support for it. So we got a letter from her and I know Eric attended the meeting and um, the meeting, I can't remember. I think it might've been recorded. I'm not positive about that, but so I'll just put it on the uh, 20th agenda for the 20th. Perfect. And Jeff, just you know, a, a point of correction. Uh, it's not forest and trail. It's the town forest committee. Yeah, yeah, I always uh, threw that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for keeping me straight, Mary. And Eric, go ahead. I actually um, want to give a point to maybe consider not discussing it. So, I mean, it's one of those things where it may, uh, may be a hot button issue with some people. It was a public meeting around half dozen, to maybe seven people showed up, you know, one opposed it, the rest of the public seemed to be for it and so on like that. But they're, they're the ones authorized. I wonder what the point of the discussion will be. I want to, and ask, ask George to some degree because it's almost like when people so it sounds like someone's complaining about a decision a vote that was made they didn't like the decision which is fine but if someone does that with like another one of committees let's say conservation or ZBA they come to us complained we then discuss it and try to override their decision do you know what I'm trying to say no well, it's almost on based it's it's very similar to the discussion we had with the previous group that you know they want us to tell the board of health to reconsider something they want us to talk to the conservation commission but do we have you're you're right eric like do we have the per se to do that or i mean as the executive board of the town should we be discussing large de decisions even if we don't if do people want to hear our opinion on it or not i guess is the question yeah i mean that that's kind of what i'm saying so i, I cuz i've been thinking about this cuz i i i knew, I, I saw the letter when i came in and I understood it, but I was at the thing and it was a vote and it was a proper vote. And, um, you know, they made their decision. I, uh, and then you know, again, I, I kind of analyzed it to other groups, other boards and committees that are even underneath us, you know, we don't go and even if we don't like the decision, we don't change their decision. We don't call them before us and say, you made the bad decision or whatever else. And I'm not saying that's going to happen here. And so maybe if the goal, if your goal to have a thing is to just discuss and discuss the things, but don't don't consider overriding it. Um, well, I, 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 I'm not sure I'm saying that. The thing I think is different, like the Board of Health <laughs> is elected, first of all, so we wouldn't tell them what to do anyway because they're elected. The Conservation Commission has regulations they enforce. The difference here is I don't think we have a delegation of authority that's well defined with this. What's it called? Give it the name again. The, the Town Forest Committee. Town Forest Committee. There are probably things that they can well, well, I think it's the same as a conservation we appoint them now if you we do appoint them but it's different because they're the town forest committee is not governed by any larger state law oh, they don't yeah. have yeah. certain I think, in other words let's say they wanted to bulldoze and put down a hockey rink or whatever I don't know I, I just think that they probably have some things that we are delegating a certain level of authority to them to approve and some things that might require the select board to concur with perhaps i don't know what that is but i'd be willing to bet you that the definition isn't like super clear i don't think yeah you know what i kind of agree with what eric said like maybe we don't need to discuss i changed my mind like we don't need to discuss it i don't disagree with eric but why don't we look at why don't we just look at what their delegation of authority is to see if we're happy with it is that all right I, yeah, I, yeah. can i say something yeah go ahead yeah, I've I've looked into it because I've you know I am on forest and trail and open space and we've yeah. discussed this. We've heard their proposal. Um, 
I've been to at least an earlier meeting. And I think that the issue here is uh, one, Jeff, you're absolutely right. If you read the state law for town force or the local bylaw, uh, their authority is not at all well-defined. It's like manage the forest um, for the public good. I mean, you know, so which public? In this case, there's a group of avid bikers that want a, a, a bike park, not just tra bike trails, which they already have quite a, a bit of, but a skills park, which involves, you know, clearing underbrush and putting structures in town forest. So the question is, and, and, and it's an open question. I don't think it's clear yet. Uh, to what degree, what change, what amount of change in town forest uh, requested by a specific group uh, is the proper use of the town forest that is the Per, that is the um, that's owned by the whole town. Basically, everybody in town has an interest in town forest. We all own it together. So, can a small group say, you know, the extreme case, of course, would be, yeah, I want to bulldoze an acre uh, to put up a, a, a motorcycle track, uh, you know, round and round or something like that. In this case, it's. Um, it's, it's less intrusive, but it's not unintrusive. So there's no clear statement in the bylaw as to where one draws the line there. And that's why there's opinions on both sides. All right, and, so the only thing I want to not get, well, this is a select board report. This isn't an uh, agenda item. So I- All right, okay, I sorry. I don't want that. to discuss the issue. I just want to see if we can, I, I, I'm, Pretty convinced if you if unless someone's vehemently opposed that we should discuss this on the 20th and maybe in a general way. I don't disagree with what Eric said, but I think there's enough here that we would benefit from just discussing how we manage uh, town forest. Is that Jerry? Yeah, you right. Hand up. Do you uh, change your mind? Uh, yeah. I, no, I think you addressed it, Joe. I just wanted to remind the board that this is not formally on your agenda. Yeah, right. exactly. we have the the charter of of the forest uh, town forest committee that we can send around in advance of your next meeting. Let's just look at that, and we can contemplate this issue. But I don't I don't know that we would take a vote to overrule it. But I think we need to at least think about what how much we want them to have independent authority to do without other input. Can I ask whether you consulted with the town forest committee? Are we catching them by surprise? Uh, well, I don't think we're catching them by surprise. I went to their meeting when they discussed this in the fall, uh, and they knew that we were just wondering what their authority was. I couldn't go to this particular one, but I can call Dave Colleen and and just say he he knows that we're interested in it. I knew that Eric attended it, so we. Have what, I'm, what I'm saying is that I would I would side with the two votes that say don't to bring them in if this is sort of like a summons to a, a, a committee i didn't I, say i want them to... treated with respect and collaboration yeah, I, and so on I didn't, if I didn't, we could decide we could decide now whether we should bring them in or not we could they could certainly it's a public meeting but i i wasn't proposing that we grill them i was proposing that we decide how we want to manage town forest what we want to delegate and not delegate. Well, could I suggest you have a conversation with them first? And sure. Then, no, that's a good point. And and proceed collaboratively. Uh, yeah, yeah. It just I, strikes I, me too much like uh, you know, all of a sudden at the end of a meeting, you know, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, we decide we're going to want to bring. I just got the letter yesterday, Paul, <laughs> from a resident. And you're the only one on this board that goes crazy when we don't respond to residents all the time. I'm trying to be responsive to a letter from a resident. So anyway, I'm, I'm, go, go ahead, I'm, Eric. You, get, get, get me down off the cliff, will you? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, su I suggest next week let's let's have an agenda. I'm even to discuss what we're discussing right now, almost to reiterate what we're discussing, and, and they'll, they'll they'll hand out the uh, charter or whatever it is, the purview, and yeah. you know we'll decide you know um, what's appropriate or what. You can touch base with David. I don't yeah. think he'll be super surprised to be honest with you, but All right. um, and then we'll decide. 
And then we'll decide if there actually will be a vote of the board and the vote of the board will be next week on May 4th. That's One of my little concerns is the people that support this are people with school kids. The next yeah. meeting is during the um, April break when people are leaving. And I think uh, that's right. unfair. You know, then I, that's a perfect solution. Yeah, I think it's unfair to have a vote at that time there. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. So I like that solution. Okay, so let's at least have an agenda item just to talk about this. You know, we'll all hand out the charter and do whatever we got to do and, yeah. and have this discussion. All right. I mean, I, I'll still say, because I said it once, I don't think it's inappropriate to say, I strongly reserve against like trying to override another authority's a board's authority. We'll talk about what that authority is next week. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. All right. Does anyone else have anything else? I don't know. If, do you have anything you wanted to bring up uh, under TA, Jeremy? Uh, thanks, Jeff. Not tonight, given the hour. Okay. Well, thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, you I benefit, have, George. do I have a motion to adjourn anywhere? <laughs> I'm moved. Second. All right, Marion. Aye. George. Aye. Paul. Aye. Garrett. Nay. And I am I as well. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's right.